Video game delays. Far Cry got delayed today. Oh, really? That was weird. Yeah, Far Cry 6 and uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine got delayed. Okay, did I start? Oh, God. Okay, we're, we're live. We started a new stream accidentally. <laughs> oh, boy, like, what a before, mess. before we already started a live stream? I know, we're live at the moment. Like, I, I started oh. another stream, but no one has the right... Oh, man. That's okay. That's why I was holding off from tweeting out this one until we knew what the actual stream stream was. Okay, there we go. I see you now. Okay, I'm gonna tag you. Oh, so you get thank God. Thank God we got a. Uh... <laughs> thank God Jeff Keeley's face is just gonna be watching me the whole time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, All I'm right. just going to fix everything on studio. And, All right. Uh, yeah. uh, oops, I cannot send web addresses. So hopefully everyone in chat just knows to check out the uh, channel. New stream. That works. Silly mm -hmm. so, folks. Okay, now let's go back to okay, this one and get realize that I was mixed up. <clears throat> okay, okay. Copy paste oh, that, oh, that, oh, that, oh, that, oh, that, oh. and we'll be good. The early days of podcasting woes. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> okay, well at least we got that all sorted out. Yeah, now it works. We'll, get, we'll proceed that way. I'll send the link on Discord last and then we'll start. Okay, okay, okay. At least I think some people found us. Yeah, six people <laughs> found us. <laughs> Sorry for the misunderstanding, boys. Um, we'll, we'll start it again right here. Uh, the first scheduled stream didn't work with Streamlabs, unfortunately. I have no clues why. We're very sorry for the misunderstanding, but at least now it works. So thank you all for being here. Welcome to Demon Appreciation Podcast, Episode 4. And joining me today, we have Spencer, Shin Megami Tensei Network. How are you doing, man? Oh, my God. It is just Spencer, please. I, I saw I saw somebody like had a tweet thread going on today of people online do you, do you want to be called by your real name or your online handle and i'm like listen if there was any way to let everyone know who follows me online to like just call me spencer as opposed to smtn it's like at one point there was a team so like being like the smtn team made sense but it's literally just me so <laughs> let less of a big deal now so yeah i'll just go by just spencer and i guess it makes more sense because my channel is just spencer yeah yeah your your channel's name is your name so it works fine. All right. So I can well, put all my uh, sad makeup tutorial videos on there and, and sometimes <laughs> SMT videos. Yep. You can definitely go unrelated now. <laughs> it works perfectly fine. <laughs> um, yeah, guys. So as you can see with the title, we have a few topics that we want to talk about today. Um, Persona 5 Scramble, uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5. And it's not in the title, but we'll also talk Nocturne and, of course, the classics unrelated questions so <laughs> should be really interesting uh you guys gave us a lot of uh questions in the discord so i really do appreciate it thank you so much for that spencer do you have a preference do we start with persona 5 scramble related questions or anything else your choice it, interesting all right so you're going first with the questions or anything i would say normally go with your go with your leader just to keep everybody in just because i feel like questions is that one thing of like depending on the flow of questions they can either be the highlight or the low light of a podcast so like i would say pick from whatever of your news topics are like calling out to you most and then if you look at your questions maybe pull one or two out that like are kind of related i have written myself a bunch of cool questions so it's should work the main thing that i want to talk about is what we got this week from persona 5 scramble uh if you guys don't know on monday <laughs> or or, yeah. or lack of getting any <laughs> oh yeah 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 i'm being positive here <laughs> um yeah if you guys don't know monday koei tecmo they dropped their financial reports the latest reports and unlike the last one that we got a few months back which was when was that was it was it March or yeah, it would have been after the first quarter, so about yeah. April or May. April, okay. So the, on the last one, uh, there were there was an indication of plans to localize Persona Five Scramble to the West, 
and now it's nowhere to be found. So that's the news <laughs> that we got for Scramble this week. Uh, people started to talk about it. Uh, of course, we've got people saying that the game's canceled and that it's not coming to the West, things like that. So we're here to discuss that today. Uh, I have a lot of things to say uh, <laughs> about the, about Scramble. I'm sure you'll have a lot, a lot of things to say as well. So it should be really interesting. I, I want to have your opinion on the matter. I thought I, <laughs> I had the idea of naming this podcast, Did Age of Calamity Kill Persona 5 Scramble? Oh my god, I think I've already done like two videos like that on my channel. That like th Those are my favorite to do comparing uh, what I now like to call AOC because no clearly nothing else is that acronym. Uh, what one of my favorite things about AOC comparing it to Scramble is how people will immediately... Uh, lean one way or the other of like oh what are you doing like blah 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 like why are you comparing these two they're like so different and like as me one of the few people who've now played both I don't know uh, David did you check out the uh, demo that released for Calamity yep I played both demos basically so Scramble and uh, AOC so, so it's like really funny after playing both of those so much, um, which man, I cannot get over. Like, if you are even remotely curious, please check out the Age of Calamity demo just because, like, it is so much replay value. I was like just so taken aback by like how basically, like, honestly, it felt like a uh, just like kind of like sign of like Nintendo showing that like they know this game is so good that they're just going to give you the opening of it, have yeah. it transfer over to the main game, and just they're not holding anything else back. And I was like, that's that's like really because like I played that demo before repeating content for maybe like two hours. Oh, yeah, it's a big demo. I'm like an hour and a half in, and I'm not done yet. Like, there's still missions and there's still like side quests, there's even side quests that you can do. Like, it's no great mm -hmm. demo, honestly, really liked it. Play. Yeah, so like, what's so what's so funny though about like comparing it to the whole scramble thing is I I, I don't know like I'm always amazed when you see the people out there who are in the anti scramble camp, which I'll are, I'll always never understand why people who like Persona hate on the non mainline games as if like they're taking away from them or something. But what's so funny about it is like there are still people out there, even though Scramble's been out for over seven months in Japan, who think that that game literally is just Dynasty Warriors with Persona characters. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> it's like there's there's additional content. There's so many different things. Like it's it's not that base game anymore. Like like Fire Emblem was, for example. It's different. There's there's new stuff. Like yeah, it's a Muso game, but it's it's different now. I mean, even looking at Age of Calamity compared to Hyrule Warriors yeah. One, like there are so many little elements of just like oh my god, like. There's a reason this isn't called Hyrule Warriors 2. They're just like, they, they've evolved it so much and they made it so much more open and added mm -hmm. so many little features from its base game that I, that I was like so kind of taken aback from it, which was like one of my favorite things and it's still one of my favorite things about Scramble. Uh, I've actually popped in after beating Scramble, sorry, after beating the Age of Calamity demo, I immediately played the Switch version of scramble and then play the ps4 version just to like kind of get the full taste again because it had been a couple of months since i played it and i was like wow like it, it's so funny how like they play so differently in terms of like one has a jump button one has like an evade button mm -hmm. but like those games are so so similar in terms of like their story structure of like they're both very linear they're both very much about like hey you're traveling across this land one has more of the map system than the other with uh, Zelda is definitely probably going to be the larger game out of the two. Oh yeah but what what's so funny that I also kind of thought about it was just like I wonder at the end of the day, once both games are out, because uh, one of the one of the big worries that I've always had is, the, and going back to like what you're talking about, is Age of Calamity going to kill Scramble? Like obviously, the both games are, can exist fine. Like not everyone who likes Persona is going to be a Zelda Muso fan. Yep. But the reason we say is because like the more I'm playing Age of Calamity, the more I'm like, oh, I wish I wish Scramble did this, or like, oh, because like my yep. biggest thing with it that like Age of Calamity already does better than Scramble is there's two player. Yeah, hundred percent. That's cool for this type of game. Really cool. And it, you, you you played Scramble, so you can tell me. But can you change the characters while fighting? Yeah. So with uh, Scramble, you can change characters. It's actually a lot more. Um, Hyrule Warriors plays a lot more like because the maps are way bigger and not like because Scramble is kind of like Monster Hunter, where there are larger open maps, but they're segmented by loading screens. 
and Age of Calamity is just one big map. So it's a lot of, uh, with Age of Calamity, you're telling people where to go, like, hey, I need input to go across here to the map while I'm controlling this character. Yeah, that's cool. Whereas I like with, that. Whereas with Scramble, you're always all together because all the fights are uh, instances. They're not just, like, random hordes. Okay. Okay, so that's kind of different. Like, on that, on that front, at least. Oh, that's going to Yeah, cool. so, like, Did my, my worry, though, is I'm kind of just wondering... And not, not even wondering, I'm just like... I, I think people just need to kind of get it in their heads of, like... If Age of Calamity, at the end of the day, is the better in almost every way experience to scramble, not even really getting into story, that's where it's going to hurt it. Yep. For sure. For sure. The one thing that's... Uh stood out to me in that uh, uh <laughs> that was a question about scramble but now we're going on aoc you see that exactly what we said unrelated stuff is the better <laughs> um yeah what i was about to say the the um hey, thanks for thanks for subscribing heather really appreciate it um the thing that struck to me when i watched the direct was you can control divine beasts that looks crazy. Oh, yeah. Did you yeah, when they them, dropped like... that in the trailer. Yeah, when they dropped that in the trailer, I was just like, oh, okay, well, there's your trump card. Oh, yeah, that's a really cool difference. Like, is there anything similar to this in, like, regular Warriors games? Do you see this <sighs> sometimes? Regular Warriors games, less so. Uh, there, there's always, like, extreme stuff in the form of, like, depending on what you're riding. Like, you could ride, like, elephants or larger form horses and stuff, but... Uh, nothing to the extent of the Divine Beast. Although, like, from what already I dissected from the trailer, it, it is definitely going to be, like, controlled segments. Like, I'm betting it is very much like, hey, do this. Because, like, if you kind of freeze frame in the trailer, you're seeing that, like, the enemies are obviously, like, cannot do anything. It's it's definitely more of just, like, a interactive moment of feeling badass as opposed to, like, this is, like, a, like you won't be able to select the Divine Beast on every map. Is, is oh, definitely yeah, what it's going to sure. be like. For sure, it's going to be at some precise on some precise missions, because that's something big and something new. Like the when in the trailer you saw them, like the the um, divine beast was like shooting lasers at the base of the moblins, and everything blew up. Like hey, it's beautiful as well for a Switch game, but I that's a question. Did you experience any type of frame drops with it? Because I oh no yeah, like a hundred percent. I'm not a big technical dude, so most of the time I'm not complaining. But for this one, oh, there's there's some moments where it drops pretty hard. I I don't know about the numbers, but I'm sure it drops like, like, impo importantly. So it, it definitely depends on a couple of different factors. So I I kind of put it through its paces of I tried single player through the whole demo docked and undocked i did co-op through the whole demo docked and undocked and for instance i'm amazed that you can do undocked through the uh demo just because like when that game's like pushing it like you're using that whole screen real estate and mm -hmm. i've noticed uh it's less of the game has trouble running all the time or because some people originally when the demo first came out thought like impa like she's so fast the frame rate can't really keep up with her it's really that first level of like that big open Hyrule Warrior Hyrule field of like using Impa in that big field of like the more wide open it is, the, the more enemies are going to be on screen. The harder the game kind of has at like keeping that stable frame rate. But like yep. I never saw it go below twenty even on portable. I'm at the very least kind of surprised that there is no performance or um like there's no performance or frame rate mode sorry performance or visuals mode which they've uh done like scramble had that fire emblem warriors had that hyrule warriors has actually never had that which is kind of surprising i don't know if that's just maybe a uh nintendo thing itself i will say like yeah it, it definitely has performance dips but like i never felt like oh wow like this is like so slow i can't do anything oh, no, and yeah, the, the game the game definitely is trying to keep that zelda breath of the wild look through the whole thing like i uh um, like, I, I, I personally thought, like, the, the game, like, nails the look it's going for. Just, like, how oh, yeah. every That's time good. I'm playing Scramble, I was always like, wow, this doesn't feel like a Dynasty Warriors game. It just feels like I'm playing Persona. Yeah, exactly. Like, they, they nailed the environments. Would you say that, talking about the frame rates, would you say that it's a similar experience than Scramble on Switch? Like, not so, PS4, but, I, but Switch? So, I haven't played the full version of Scramble, and Scramble definitely gets a lot more intense than the demo. Like, the demo is the most boring part of that whole game. Yeah, that's what I heard. Um, 
but it's it definitely chugs. I, I've seen some of the more intensive parts of it, but I think neither game has superior frame rate or visuals compared to like they're they're pretty on par in terms of that. I was curious though because Age of Calamity is a Switch exclusive, wondering if they were going to try and push a little bit more out of it. But I mean, the game is already doing so much. Like I was already surprised with like how large and expansive everything is like ju- just in that first map it shows you like that very first level is so great in the sense of like it gives you such a great feeling of all the characters and the systems in one quick and easy level while just being like so big like that first level is if not bigger the size of the entire first jail cell which are like palaces in scramble mm, okay okay oh king dark Academy brings up a great point uh the scramble demo and also Age of Calamity, yeah. The, the, the one thing you'll have is they're very long load times before level starting. And the longer the level is, the longer the load. Oh, I didn't notice that, though. Yeah, um... I think I ended up counting on Scramble. I remember actually Scramble having a pretty long load of about like 30 to 25 seconds per level. And Age of Calamity almost, I think, had like almost like 45 seconds to 50... So, like, they, they got up there, but you have to remember, once you're in the level, there's no loading at all. So, I kind of give it a little bit more of a pass there. Whereas Scramble, actually, as I was mentioning, Scramble has those interconnected levels. So, mm-hmm. there's a load screen in between every different area you're going to. So, you're okay. seeing load screens a lot more than Age of Calamity does. Hmm. Well, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So, basically, when you're in an area, you can just, while being in the area, without, like, going back to the menu, you can change to another zone? Is that, is that what's... Uh, with Scramble, so with Scramble, you can always, at every level of the map, lets you access almost every menu, I think outside of, like, shops. Okay. But every level is kind of like its own miniature level. Sorry, every section in a level is kind of like its own miniature level. So you can sort of have to just, like, make do with it. Like, so basically, you're not going to run through a level in 30 seconds and be done unless you're doing that on purpose. And every level has a fast travel point. So, like, you'll never have to just be stuck looking at load time, load time, load time, load time. And those loads between okay. sections are a lot shorter than the initial big load. Okay. Oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. You're bringing knowledge to the stream. Hey, hey. Very good. Very good. I have a big question. I have... No, no, no. Let me rephrase that. I have the big questions. I know that you were also a believer... For a little event that we got a while back, New Game Plus Expo. <laughs> <laughs> the event everyone wants to forget. Yeah. We all thought that we would get the localization announcement at this show. Now, my question is, when will we get the announcement? Do you have an idea? Do you have something in mind? Mm, so, <clears throat> the nicest answer there is, is sadly, you're going to wake up one day and it's going to be a tweet from a press release. It's not going to be at a big mm-hmm. event. The game just has missed every opportunity it has. And right and like as nice as it would be for the world to be like, oh, dude, what if we got it at the Keeleys? Like, if we got it at the Game Awards and stuff. And it's like, yeah, that'd be great there. But like, why does Jeff Keeley at that point want a 10 month old game that everyone on Twitter is either mad at not for being out or mad because mm-hmm. people won't shut up about? So. You're not wrong. It, it, it's tough because like, as I've always mentioned, Scramble is the easiest slam dunk in marketing history. It is a game that you just say, it is Persona 5 2, yep. and then people will buy it. <laughs> like, Basically. all they got to do is say, here's the game, here's the demo, it's out in three months, and they've basically done all they need to do to market the game. Hmm. Yeah, basically. Like, the expectations are high. I would have to agree with the thing at the Game Awards. Like, I don't see this game showing up at, at, at this event or anything like that. Like, not a PlayStation showcase or nothing like that, honestly. I feel like, yeah, Twitter, Twitter drop makes sense. Now, when would they do it, though? Do you have an idea? Uh, because I... Yeah, the, 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 the big thing right now is if you, if you know anyone at Atlas or Sega right now, Atlas and Sega has one job. Their job is to get Yakuza out and for Yakuza 7 to be their biggest game since Persona 5. Yakuza 7 is their biggest push for many, many reasons. It's coming out at new console launching. It has a big push by Microsoft, and it is easily their biggest localization project they've ever done. Yeah, plus kind of a reboot for the series as well, so... Oh, yeah, 
Exactly. And that's why it's not called. I mean, I, I will always call it Yakuza Seven because Same. I think having to call it Yakuza like a dragon just takes too long. Mm -hmm. But um, I think they are in such a key category to make it a slam dunk, just because like I've played the Japanese demo. I'm super duper excited about it. I have no idea how reviews are being handled. I know I've already. I've already filled out a survey to request a review from them, but I have such terrible track records of getting reviews from or even anything from Atlas. So my expectations are very low to review it quickly. So I don't really know a lot of the behind the scenes of like embargoes, but you have to think about it. The game's going to be out in less than like, honestly, it's 10 days from now. Yeah. So they are at all hands on deck mode of let's promote this game. Let's get people. And also that's a long game. Like, Yakuza is 7 is almost as long as vanilla Persona 5. Oh, really? And it is a way... Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, uh, a friend of... I had multiple friends beat the game, but my first friend, I remember, uh, he's one who likes to do all the side quests and everything for it. It took him about 80 to 95 hours to do all the side quests. Wow. Okay, well, with yeah. all the side content. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Well, with all the side content, the Yakuza games, they have so much side content that... I can see it, but how long's the main story? Like, if you... main story took him at least forty-five hours. Okay, well, that's that's already a bit longer than than the other games, though. Yeah, but also it's important to remember since it is turn-based, like obviously the story's going to be at a little bit of a slower pace. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I can't wait to play this one. Definitely one of the, my most anticipated games for this year, if not the most anticipated one. It is so odd to me that they, especially this one. Like, it is a reboot of Yakuza in terms of, like, for the West especially. It is coming day and date to Xbox and PC, which they've never done before. Why they have not decided to release that demo that the press all got to play to everybody like Japan did, I have no idea. Like, think about it. They've slept on the last, like, three demos for their last releases. Catherine Full Body, 13 Sentinels, and now Yakuza 7. All three of those games had demos available in Japan, and the West is just getting nothing. It's like, obviously, if they're limited on staff, just say, hey, the demo's not coming. But not releasing the demo and making us all have to play it in Japanese, like, you're making so many people jump through hoops. Like, the actual percentage of people who are going to buy it in the West who want to experience it is maybe, at best, 10%. Mm. And another thing, like, they, they... How long did it take for them to show gameplay? It felt like they were scared of showing that it was turn-based. Oh, in the West? In yeah, the West, yeah. They, they will not admit it publicly, but yeah. Sorry, I'm choking. They won't admit it publicly, but yeah, th there's a reason you had to wait two months before the game came out until they would show gameplay, because even when they were showing gameplay in the trailers for Like a Dragon, they removed the HUD. They did not want you to know it was an RPG, because they were like, oh yeah. god, do people want this to be an RPG? And it's really surprising, just because like they know there's a large RPG audience who likes Atlas and Sega, they know Yakuza 7 had a really good rep like it, it was very well received in January. Like when it released this year in Japan, it was very, very highly received. Um right. and they were like they were they were very op open about it. They were like, hey, we we made the best RPG we could. If you guys don't like it, let us know and we'll change it. So like it's not impossible that like they could have just like been like, okay, because like honest to God, there was a part of me that was like, I bet you, because of how sneaky they were being about it. I would not have been surprised if they were like, okay, let's make this game come out 10 months later than the Japanese one, but let's just take out all the RPG systems. Just because, like, I I, mm. I think that they have that little faith in the West of how Yox is, as an RPG will do. Uh, but I'm glad, they, but change, I'm glad they didn't do that. I, I'm glad that they changed it because it's been six games. And don't get me wrong, I love them, but I'm sure it's going to be a fresh change. And I'm, I'm really excited for that. So can't wait to play this one. Think about it like this. I think think about it like this. This is the first and probably last big RPG this year. I'm not counting Persona 5 Royal just because it's a re-release. But like well, think I about right. what other turn-based JRPGs have released in 2020 that are like AAA budget. Tokyo Mirage Sessions on <laughs> Switch. Exactly, but that's another <laughs> re-release. Oh uh, man, this year's been slow. Uh, for turn-based well, RPGs, at least. Yeah, like, there, there's been a lot, but, like, for, like, big ones, like, think about it. The biggest release in Japan this year for RPGs, and, and this is just honest to goodness the truth, if you live in Japan, your two big RPGs are this, and this is not a slight on any of the games. Yakuza 7 and Atelier Ryza 2. Hmm. Big lineup. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, there were tons of 
awesome games, but just like turn based ass turn based RPGs, you don't have the Final Fantasies this year. Like Final no. Fantasy was just an action game, so you were you were a little more limited in that sense for it, which is fine. But like as I mentioned a lot when I because I would actually tweet at the Yakuza account quite a lot, and I'd be like, "What's wrong with you? Like, be proud of your game. Your game looks great. Like, its animations are fun. Like Yakuza on social media." I was getting to the point where I thought Xbox was better at marketing Yakuza than the actual Yakuza Twitter account. Because, like, Yakuza on X, like, the Xbox Game Pass or Microsoft uh, Xbox account on Twitter loves tweeting about Yakuza. Yep. Like, they're, they're very aware of, like, how fun and crazy those games are. And it's like, yeah, you can't that. just keep, like, you can't just keep using um, Kiryu and Majima memes to sell Yakuza forever. <laughs> like, you have to start embracing the new stuff, even if it is Uncharted Territories. That's true. You're not wrong. They have a, it, to me. It really felt like they were not confident in what they had, at least for the Western audience. Like it clearly in Japan, it, it, it works. It's really sad. it's really sad because yeah, if you look at it like as just a consumer, like taking all bias out of it as least as much as I can, Atlas and Sega in the West, I don't think have ever been less confident than this year. It's like think about it, the last time they've really puffed out their chest to market a game was Royal. Everything else, they were like. Here's here's Sakura War. Just play it if you want. I guess oh, I, I don't yeah. know. Whatever. That's another one. Sakura Wars. Hmm. So if we get back to it, let, let's get back to it. When is it coming? Because if, I'll tell you what I had in mind first, and you let me know what you what you think about my past prediction that me. I had. Um, I was thinking January, February scramble, March, beginning of April Nocturne, and then five in November. But now that that we got that Koei Tecmo report. Um, thinking something along, along along the lines of same thing of of course for Nocturne and Five and Scramble in summer. Because I'm sure so, the game's coming. Like it, it I'm, I disagree with everyone who says the game's not going to get released here. Like no way. That, that's like no my, way. that's like my favorite because I. I, I seriously, I have a folder on my phone of just pictures of actual proof that there's an English build that exists and has been worked on for the last 12 months exactly. in Atlas West. That I'm like, man, I, I, I could do this, but obviously like, I don't want to get anybody in trouble like over a fucking video game, especially. But like, what's so funny about it is... Like, what's so funny about, like, the naysayers, like, so with your guesses, uh, I'm completely in the same camp with you. My only situation is this... Um, I definitely agree. Early before Nocturne, Scramble could come out at an early like January to February release and kill March or April for Nocturne. I I know Atlas too much, and in my gut, I know that there's at least one more delay pushing out five for 2021. Like I I know that game has just been like it's been cooking for a long time, and I know it's going to make a lot of people get really salty. But they're going to have to push that game into 2022. About which game? Uh, SMT5. Like, so, oh. uh, Noct Nocturne and Scramble are definitely early first half of 2021, but 100% SMT5 is not coming out next year. Why? <laughs> so you, you, you you got, now, now you're in, in, in some interesting territory. Let's talk about it. So you have some interesting factors you have to think about. Nintendo is already committed to a worldwide release. That's going to be that game's biggest selling factor. Yes. In all the Western market. They have to, have to stick that worldwide date. They cannot Absolutely. just do Japan first and push because guess what? They've look they Nintendo was more aware of Atlas fans than Atlas sadly is. Nintendo was aware. <laughs> They're looking at people dunking on all their games like no one has ever asked Nintendo like oh come on like 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 Nintendo is never like okay Japan will get this first but then you guys will get it like a couple months later. Like they've wisened up to it especially in the Switch generation of no worldwide release for everything we have the manpower we can do it like if you put enough money and time into scheduling everything you can make it happen which yeah. atlas has clearly shown that they can't do um so uh and also just to like kind of back that up a little bit with some more proof great example all of nocturne's voice acting is done mm -hmm. that, that all of nocturne's voice acting finished up in the summer there is no actual reason Nocturne couldn't have had a worldwide release outside of Atlas is a small team and they are basically breaking their back to make Yakuza happen and they're finishing out the end of the year with an easy game that like takes almost like comparatively almost little to no time with 
Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. Because Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, even though I'm super hyped for that game, that's basically Puyo Puyo Tetris 1.5, a reason to put it on next gen. So going back to SMT5 is reason I ex expected to get pushed. Atlas is only going to show it gameplay-wise on two chances. If Nintendo makes a big deal out of it in terms of gameplay, and I don't see them doing that in the first half of the year, and I that agree. is such a big game for them that they're going to want to show it off, at least in terms of gameplay, to the public and let it stew, because I cannot just see them being like, hey guys, here's your gameplay reveal for the first time, and the game's out in three months. Like, with a game like this, you kind of want the public reception to, like, sort of shape it. Like, if you look at even something like Persona 5, like, there was many stages of them showing that game to the public, and it changing, whether it was due to what fans thought or what the creators thought. Mm -hmm. And was such a huge property, like, they, like, releasing SMT5 in 2021 or 2022, at the end of the day, it makes no difference. Like, the game's gonna come out either way, and they've just waited so long, because like, as hype as that last trailer was, the mm -hmm. one thing missing from it, not a single second gameplay. of actual gameplay. Yeah. And that scared me. I'm being honest. That scared me at first. I was like, oh. And, and now also, and just a little bit more to give like a little bit more validity, validity to my um, claim outside of my history following the company for so long. Think about it like this. Even with easy, and I'm putting easy in air quotes that you guys can't see, with an easy game to develop, like Catherine Full Body. Catherine Full Body, now, while it's a great game, at the end of the day, it didn't actually add that much content. A game like that got delayed a year and a half from its initial planned release date. If something like that gets pushed back for a year and a half, what makes you think that something like um, that something like Scramble, which has gone over three years now and not a single second of gameplay, would actually release in the next 12 to 14 months without any delay? I get what you're saying. The thing is, they waited three years for the second trailer. Which leads me to believe that like, they must have something on their hands to decide like, okay, we're three years with no information given to, the, to our fans. Now we're ready. New trailer. Not much, but still a new trailer and a date. Why would they do it? And it's, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Nintendo here as well because Nintendo is not, doesn't have the, the, uh, the, the history with delays that, that Atlas has, for say. So I feel confident in them for this particular game like i'm they waited so long why would they just drop a trailer if they weren't really ready and why would they be confident enough to say 2021 if they weren't really ready because let's face it i was not when i was watching the trailer i was so excited nocturne i was excited smt5 i was extremely excited i was not expecting would a date you, at the end would you like to know <laughs> would you like to know the uh cynical actual business answer as to why Go ahead. Because there's something staring you in the face of your question that I'm surprised you haven't picked up on yet. Why would they show off a game in July with no gameplay after almost two plus years of silence just to put a date on it? The reason? Because they already got a HD remaster lined up to release today in Japan, October 29th, and that game was coming out this day in Japan, Hell or High Water. And you can't just show Nocturne HD and pretend SMT5 doesn't exist. And mm. so obviously, as kind of hilarious as it is, like a lot of people look at Nocturne Remastered and go, wow, the hype for 5 is so real, they're doing Nocturne Remastered. No, that's not true. If that was true, that would be a Switch exclusive. There's a reason Nocturne is coming out on Switch, um, Switch and PS4 in Japan, and it, like, Spoilers, guys. When Nocturne Remastered comes out in the West, it's going to be coming out on everything because there's no reason not to. It's a game that was made in Unity, and if you already go through the code, there's already signs for Steam, Steam. in the code of it. Yeah, I of like, that. if you're making a emulated PS2 game in Unity, and you don't put that on PC, you actually just hate that platform. <laughs> Like, yeah. you've already had to develop everything along the way to make this work on a PC, okay. and you would actively be stopping yourself from making money. So you're, you're so, saying, just give me one second, sorry to interrupt, but you're saying this because I'm, I'm not fully aware of how it works on, on that front. So because when you, you're developing under Unity, it makes it's basically you're developing a PC game. That's what you're saying? Yeah, because like, obviously all video games at some point have 
have to be developed, whether they're on a dev kit or not. Like, PCs are the primary dev tool for yeah. so many people, whether they're working in tools like Unity, Game Maker, or Unreal Engine 4. So with something like Unity, it like, Atlas didn't make Nocturne remastered and put it on PS4 and Switch. Atlas made a PS2 emulator in Unity, and then they put that on PS4 and Switch. Which was the whole basis of my video I put out today of just like, hey guys, like looking at all the signs that they put into Nocturne Remastered, more PS2 ports would be the easiest thing they'd ever have to do. Because Absolutely. think about it, all they had to do was just basically make like a widescreen PS2 emulator and they added voiceover and that's all they had to do for Nocturne. So now look at the other PS2 games that already all are translated in every language that they theoretically want outside of eFigs and all those One games two. already had voice acting. Yep, like DDS. For example, mm -hmm. it works. I'm, I'm sure, and I did a video like right after the announcement of Nocturne that saying that I feel like DDS is going to happen at some point, one and two for sure, because I it, it's the same. I, maybe you can clarify for me, but DDS is running on the same engine as Nocturne, so yes, the the engine for Nocturne originally came from the Machin X engine, so that engine basically powered everything from. Uh, Machin, Machin Shao, Nocturne, DDS 1 and 2, Devil Summoner 1 and 2, and kind of the early bits of Persona 3 and 4. Exactly. So, is it really that hard to just put that... Is it, is it, is it possible for them to reuse the work that they did for Nocturne Remaster and do something like for DDS? Like can they oh, just no, yeah, you, exactly. Assets? And plus, think about it like this. In Japan, they're, they're charging people like 50 to 60 bucks a pop for just Nocturne. For just voice acting, basically. Because yeah, being... like, so, like, like uh, even if they're, like, being generous and, like, they keep the price a little bit around the same, so 60 to 70 bucks um, for the other compilations. Because, like, let's be real. If you're selling DDS or Devil Survivor, you have to sell those together. Like, no one is going to buy Devil Summer 1 on its own for, like, 50 bucks. Like, you can get away with it yeah. with Nocturne, because Nocturne is kind of very special in its own account. But, like, yeah, you can't, <laughs> you can't split up those duologies. Yep, I agree. Like people win. Oh man, that. that could, like you think you people got butt hurt over Dante? Imagine having to buy DLC to experience the second part of De Digital Devil Saga <laughs> for a fifty or sixty bucks game. Yeah, I know it makes no sense. It makes no sense. They can't do this. They can't do this to me. But I'm still scared because you know Atlas. Sometimes they, yeah, they do some interesting. I'll, I'll say this. I could <laughs> see them being really cheeky. At the very least, they would do the most Japanese thing ever of splitting up a game that could easily fit onto one disc or cartridge into two discs or two carts to make it more expensive. Which, at the very least, it's stupid and scummy, but I at least respect it if they release it at the same time. And in most cases, when that happens in Japan, the Western publishers are smart enough to know that they just comp like put it together in the compilation. Like A lot of people don't know this, but... Back in the early days of HD compilations, I actually followed the HD compilation scene a lot back in my early video game coverage days. When games would be split up, they would actually be sold split up. So something like the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, in the West it was sold as 2, 3, and Peace Walker. One, uh, 2 and 3 were one separate game, and Peace Walker was its own separate disc in Japan. Why? Just because they were like, oh, we'll split it up, because people are going to buy both anyway, so let's do it. Mm -hmm. uh, Final Fantasy X and X-2 HD Remix, uh, sorry, HD Remaster, in Japan, X and X-2 were sold separately. They were two separate boxed games. But in America, they're like, we're not going to be able to charge people $40 for X-2. What year do you think this is? They, co they combined <laughs> it, because of course... Hmm. Oh man, it's. I, I'm still thinking about it, but they they cannot. They, they're not Nintendo. They can't pull a Wind Waker HD 60 bucks, Twilight Princess HD 60 bucks. They can't do it with Digital Devil Saga, for example. Now, or Devil to be Summoner fair, is fair at worse. least, just because I know someone's going to be that person. In fairness to Nintendo, at least for Wind Waker, they did actually put a lot of effort into making that a better looking and feeling game, and both of those HD versions were only fifty bucks, not sixty. Oh, really? Because here it was it was sixty in Canada. In well, Canada, sixty it's, it's for you is like forty five so. for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But whenever you have a game full price, it's sixty, and for us, it's seventy nine ninety nine. 
I want you to know, I, I, I recently, I, I recently have been helping a friend of mine like do some launch coverage for the PS5, and I've been having to look up prices for US, Canada, UK, and Japan. And Canada prices make, there's like no uniformity to it. Like I kept thinking, oh, it's like add 20 bucks to it. But like sometimes it's 15, sometimes it's yep. 25. I'm like, I don't know who makes your guys' prices. Right. Catrin Full Body on Switch was 65 bucks. <laughs> Dude, like nothing else comes out at 65 here. It's either 40 or 79.99 or sometimes you have 69.99. Like it's, and now new gen games are 89.99. Like the the Sony titles for for PS5, it's crazy. It's crazy. But that's a whole other topic. <laughs> I, you know, I got a I got a quickie question for you at the very least, just because as of this recording, we are now two weeks away, exactly two weeks away from PS5, and ten days away from actually no, it's not ten days. It's uh, twelve days away from Xbox Series S and X. If there was a version. And that came out, and you had the choice at um, Nocturne coming out in the West, a PS5 box or a PS4 box. Would you have any reason not to get the PS5 box? No. Because I was thinking about it like this, of like, a lot of these companies are getting into weird situations of like, what's stopping Atlas from just selling Nocturne remastered as a PS5 game? <laughs> you know? Because like That's it's going question. to work, of course. like it's going to work on it, like it has to, and wouldn't it be more appealing to see something like that in a PS5 box yeah. that also works on PS4 as opposed to throwing something in a blue box in a case among millions that also works on PS5? Because I think it's more appealing putting something in the brand new colored box for the new system, even if it works on both. Because like think about it, by the time. Even Nocturne comes out next year. We'll be lucky to have like over a hundred new PS5 games. So like, why not put that extra amount of work in to have it stand out? That's why like yeah. my biggest um, suggestion at the time of like why Thirteen Sentinels like totally bombed was like imagine how much more hype it would have been if they delayed it two months and made Thirteen Sentinels a PS5 time. game. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That would have been crazy, crazy. And there's hype around launch titles. Like, there's always hype around launch titles. Listen, you, you there's someone, hardware. there are people out there who are willing to pay money to play Godfall. <laughs> Somebody out there was going to pay money to play Destruction All-Stars and thankfully got their money saved from them by Sony. But, like, <laughs> next-gen launch, people will buy anything. There's yeah. a reason Knack sold over a million copies. Yep. Not because it was good, because it was at launch. Yeah. So, like, you'd be amazed at the power of launch, like, why things are going to succeed. That's why, like... Yakuza has everything going into it of like, listen, if you're buying a Series X outside of unless you just have Game Pass and hate buying physical games, Yakuza is going to be like one of those e easy next-gen sells of like, it is optimized for Xbox. Like, Xbox is going to be the best way to play that game, mm -hmm. even better than PS4 or PS5. Yeah. So why not go for that? Like, I already know friends who have played every Yakuza game on every PlayStation platform ever. And they are jumping over to Yakuza 7 on Xbox because yeah. guess what? It's the best version at launch. Absolutely. Like, that deal is going to work for, for Microsoft and for RGG Studio. Definitely. Good move on, on their hand. I can't wait to play Yakuza <laughs> while we're on the on the subject. Did you see that, um, how is it called? P um, Picks and Love Publishing? Did you see that they did, like, a limited edition for Yakuza? Because I know that you're, you're, you're into... I... Uh, you're into like I'm, in, I'm into the limited editions. I'm into the collector's edition stuff. But Pix and Love, I I respect a lot of what they do. My problem with when they do new games is DLC. If you imported that version and you live in the states, like unless you live in Europe, your Pix and Love version, the DLC you buy on the PlayStation Store will not work with your copy. I didn't know. And that. so like. Okay. Yeah, you know, like, a lot of people don't know that. So, like, things like that are like, okay, well, that sucks. I remember one of the big things was they did a collector's edition for um, Travis Strikes Again. And I was like, oh, dude, I love No More Heroes. Like, let's go for this, because this is the only collector's edition for No More Heroes. So let's go. And then I saw that there's DLC, and it would only be region locked to EU Nintendo accounts. I'm like, yes, I can make a Nintendo account, but then I have to keep switching over just for one game. Yeah, And I'm like, like 
that, that just those little regional differences and stuff were enough to make me go, nope, I'm okay with my double Best Buy steelbooks. I'll be fine with that. No, oh, it's understandable. I very, 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 very rarely buy DLC, so it's not, like, I'm not concerned personally, but I definitely understand that it, it sucks. Like, if they were but, to release But at some... the very least, with yours, like, or anyone who buys the Pixel Love Edition, that comes with DLC that you won't be able to use unless you make a brand new PSN account. <laughs> um, I'll skip it. I'll, I'll skip my turn for that. Thanks. Thanks anyways. Okay. Um, let's. I'll, I'll ask you a bit of a uh, bit more questions about um, Scramble while while we're on the on the subject of you know games that are unknown. Uh, also, least. I just want to say because of the chat, uh, Vic Netty, I can't tell if like your voice is quiet because compared to mine, because I feel like it might even not just be standard. I have a very loud voice. I'm a loud man, <laughs> <laughs> so like it might even not just be your setup. It could just be I have I have no volume volume control it's a problem oh i'm just not that loud either so that might be a combination of both things actually <laughs> um what i wanted to know is actually a question from elon on discord and he he wanted to to ask us and it's a good question so i definitely want to have your take on it is it possible that atlas releases scramble in the west but uh without a dub like they did for q2 well at this point, I mean, is it uh, let, let, let me let me answer this it, it, with two questions. I'll give you the answer to your actual question, and then I'll make you feel better, and hopefully everyone else listening. No, they they know what they can't release it without a dub because it's releasing on relevant platforms. It's not something like a Strange Journey Redux or a Persona Q2, Q2 where it's releasing yeah. on a basically dead system. Yeah. So the only people who are going to complain about the dub are the hardcore fans like me and you who are going to complain and then also look at our shelves and see that we still bought it in day one with the collector's <laughs> edition. Um, if it, it makes, makes you feel better, though, uh, that, <laughs> that dub's recording is done. Like that game's okay. that game has been voice acted. Do not worry. <laughs> like I have, I have heard lines in English. You are good. Okay. That game is dumb. <laughs> that... They would they would have to like go back in time and like fire everybody who worked on that game. Like the only thing I don't know that like I kind of want to keep it a surprise. I don't know who any of the new voice actors are. Okay. Which like I I'm just very excited like because I've always wondered like who are they gonna get to like voice in Kichi? Like I really like I really I hope wonder. that they don't just do like like I want them to kind of like keep it as the center of like because before P5 I didn't really know who a lot of the voice actors were. Like, the only really well-known person I knew from the P5 cast back in 2017 was, like, Robbie Damon, and that's just because of Final Fantasy XV. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's like, I know Scramble's already been recorded. The only thing I haven't spoiled myself on is, like, who plays in Kichi, who plays his daughter, and who plays Sophia, along with the, all the other characters. Of course. Well, that's good to know. That's good information. But now you gave me the perfect opportunity to ask you another question that I had. <laughs> Why are they holding on to this game now? Um, it, it's hard to say because obviously they've not said anything publicly and anytime I've really asked privately, it's always just been a case of like people's hand, like I've, I've talked to so many people involved with that project off the record and it just goes like this. It's not my choice, man. Like if it was up to me, the game would yeah. have been out this summer. Cause like, I know without a, f with, without a shadow of a doubt. That game was supposed to come out in July this year. <laughs> like, there is not like there like there was not like some evil secret plan in mind to like keep this like joke going so long. So, um, I don't. Get oh it. yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so, Saltendo brings up a good point. Yes, a lot of P five people wore an SMT four final. Um, but yeah. So my only real guess with it has just been COVID hit them harder than they thought. And they were going off of because remember, Royal sold way better than they thought it would, primarily because of quarantine. Because Royal came out right at the start of quarantine in the states, and there was like that first couple of months where like you couldn't buy Persona at normal MSRP. Yeah, like it was just like totally gone, and they have restocked it multiple times now, and like you can find it everywhere. Yeah, but what's so interesting about it is, <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if. The higher-ups saw this. 
they saw we have a really busy year because think about it after royal there was soccer wars and also there's tons of other stuff soccer wars catherine 13 sentinels and <clears throat> yakuza along with puyo puyo tetris mm -hmm. that's already a ton of games that's a big year for and Sega. something yeah exactly and something like persona could wait but the problem that they've still yet to really adjust to is this you can't delay a game you haven't announced without suffering repercussions. And they're suffering those repercussions in the form of they've delayed a game that the public knows exists and the public expects to have been out or talked about by now. That it's now caused this frenzy of splitting the people of like, okay, so is it canceled? Is it not coming? Mm -hmm. Like, there are so many people out there who legitimately think this game is not coming, and you can't just tell them, no, it's coming, and then they're like, why? But like, like, without getting into it, it's just like, you're right. Any other video game would have been out or announced by now. And it, it just goes back to that big thing of what I always tell people. The longer Atlas keeps waiting every second of every day, the longer it takes for them just to announce Scramble, the worse they look. I collectively mm -hmm. keep telling people, when Scramble finally gets announced, you will feel the rotation of the earth because of everyone's collective <laughs> eye roll. It will be so heavy. <laughs> It'll be like, like a wave of sass is washing over the world. Yeah. Um. So, so the, uh, yeah, like, that, that's just the... It's that, hard that's just to like tell. Really, I don't get it. Yeah, so, like, it, it, it's just been pushed back much, and I know things have changed so much. So, like, right now, behind the scenes on my podcast... I have been jumping through hoop after hoop after hoop to get the director, the voice acting director of 13 Sentinels on my show. Nice. Yeah, I really want to talk to him outside of, hey, that's a really interesting game uh, and a great cast a of actors good and cast. stuff. But one yeah. of my biggest, but one of my things I want to talk about that is that game was literally ignored until this year. Oh, sorry, not yep. until this year. This game was pretty much ignored until the last minute. This game mm -hmm. has been announced for years and years and years and years, and literally until about 12 months ago, they were never even going to dub the game. Like, dubbing the game was pretty much assumed as to not be worth it financially. Mm -hmm. I don't know what changed their mind. Maybe they just had, like, extra money. Good I'm question. glad <laughs> they did. But, like, it, even just looking at the game from, like, the fact that the English dub is a day one patch shows this was not a priority. It was a priority to make yep. it happen, but think about it. Like like we talk about, there was no reason 13 Sentinels had to come out in September. Like, they could have just kept pushing it. Because remember, it was supposed to come out earlier in September. But, like, it came out at the end because they had to push back a couple of weeks to make the game come out the same day as the day one patch. But then as I kept mentioning them, like, who's asking for this game to come out in September? It's already been delayed so long in the West. Just why not give mm -hmm. us the complete version day one on the disc? Yeah. But when you're you're when you're complaining about this, I feel like you're you're like you're pushing your luck a bit. Like let's just I mean, let's just be happy that they added it. And voice acting, I mentioned that in my review, but for 13 Sentinels, when they announced that they were delaying the game, I think it was like you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but was it like two weeks of a delay for, for them to, to finish voice acting? Yeah, it went from beginning of September to, to like end, the end. end of uh, September. Yeah, so but the, a weird, short but the delay. weirdest thing about the delay is this. The voice acting was done in August. Oh, <laughs> I didn't so know like, that though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like review code, because like, even if I don't get review codes, trust me, I can find out like who has the game. It's very easy. Um, so I actually contacted one of the guys who was reviewing the game. He had review codes in mid-August. That day one patch was there already. So clearly my only guess was Sony just had an order, like a late order for the disc, or there was something on Sega's manufacturing, and maybe it was the underwhelming art book. I don't know. Maybe something like could have been any oh. number of factors delaying the game by two weeks. But yeah, the voices were done even before August and in the game, like implemented through Sir. That's really interesting because I was sure that the reason why they delayed it was for the voice acting. And I was extremely impressed that they had like such a good cast and they did such an amazing job with the voice voice acting of like any type of character. Any of the characters, they're extremely well done in my opinion. So I was extremely impressed. But if you're telling me that it was already like completed before, I mean, still, still a good job, but less impressive. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I, from what I talked about, because I actually um, have talked to a couple of people who at least worked on it, it definitely was one of those cases of, it's not like it was a game that, like, started work in COVID. Like, it was, it had started work before COVID and other situations like that. Like, it's impressive that it still happened. Like, there's never a moment when I'm playing 13 Sentinels where I'm like, yep, this this is when they recorded it in the booth and here's what they did in the closet. Oh, no, definitely not. Like, you cannot notice it. Never. I, I just I need to to ask you a bit of <laughs> a bit of a bit of questions about Thirteen Sentinels because you guys know I love this game so much. Um, are you done with it? I'm not. I I've been off all week. I don't go back to work until next Monday. Yes, I'm off until next Monday, and I've been pretty much my life has been keep up the pace with my videos and podcast, working on finishing this game. And been preparing for my wife's birthday, so have not been able to get it. I'm pr I'm definitely over the hump. Everything's uh, over fifty percent wise done. Okay. Cool. Uh, although I've been playing that game in an interesting way, I kind of want to ask you without getting into spoilers. Did you play it juggling uh, story and gameplay? Because the way I've been doing it, at least at the, the first like, about fifteen to twenty hours, was I'm going to do as much story as humanly possible while avoiding as much gameplay as humanly possible. What I did, or at least what I tried to do, because yes, I also did something similar to what you just said. Uh, at first, I tried to keep the pace with what they did with the prologue. So I was trying to like do a part of the a character story and then jump into the, um, what's the name of the mode? The combat mode. I was destruction. going- Destruction. Destruction, yeah. I was going back to destruction, complete a mission, and then go back to story. Uh, but we all agreed on a consensus on the spoiler cast with LaRue and uh, Kuro, and we said, I, we really do feel like the best way to experience the story is to keep all your characters at the same percentage. Like, in the best possible way. Like, if you try to get everyone, if you're at 25 with one of your characters, you try to have all of them at 25, and then you upgrade them one, 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 one. We really feel like that's the best way to experience it. Because you've, you, you're, if you're over 50 with most of the characters, you, you've seen it, but you get the story of your character and they have their own viewpoint on a specific part of the story then you get the other viewpoint on that same particular place of the story with another character it just everything works so well it's ah oh, i love this game so much honestly you, you, yeah that's a great game what are your thoughts on the game so far with what you played my emotions it's very interesting. And obviously, I, I want to hold a lot of my opinions until I've actually beaten it, because it's especially with this game. It is a story that you cannot really judge until you've seen it all. Mm -hmm. um, I am enjoying it a lot. I'm surprised at how many comparatives there are to... I don't know if you've ever played Horizon Zero Dawn, but the more I'm playing the game, like there's a lot of things that this game takes from Horizon Zero Dawn's backstory, and I'm like kind of surprised about it, like that I've never heard the comparison. Um, there's I will a bunch say, of Easter eggs in this game. Like, there's a lot of references to like sci-fi and movies and stuff oh, like that. Oh, and... yeah, that's true. It has a lot of like without saying the names, references and Easter eggs. Yeah. I'll at least say this: like straight up, like some of the like Operation Blank Blank Blank, like stuff like that. Outside of the like big hook of the game, like there are just things that are like, yep, yep, that's the that's the whole point of Horizon Zero Dawn right there. But like, it does its own thing. Obviously, there's no like robotic dinosaurs oh, yeah. <laughs> in 13 Sentinels, which would be great. Um, the more I play the gameplay of the battle, like Destruction, the more I just want to, like, talk to people about it. I'm like, I've never had a game that has such fun gameplay, but is so visually boring. Like, actually, I'm, I, it's, it's amazing that I don't think I've heard anyone say this, but, like, I've heard people complain, or not even complain, criticize the gameplay aspect of 13 Sentinels, is... Somehow, 13 Sentinels is Vanilla Ware's best and worst-looking game at the same time. It's really weird. Like, the story mm. aspect is them hitting at all tens. The gameplay is like, I, like, okay, listen, I'm aware this started as a Vita game, but, like, you were aware when you canceled it, you could have kind of bumped up the budget. Because, like, even just stuff of, like, having no attack animations leaves a lot to be desired that's a problem and, now, that, now that you mention it like they have of animations you can see yeah, them like, in the yeah, small when, squares when you're like at what the moves look like the, those previews yeah i'm like excuse me have you ever played super robot wars just do this 
such a missed opportunity. Not a deal breaker, but kind of a missed opportunity. And yes, I would have to agree that the Vita version probably was holding them back, but yeah, what, what was blocking them from changing that? Once they knew that the Vita version was cancelled, and you you probably know, but when, when was it cancelled? The Vita version? When it did they announce it? It was cancelled 2018. It was cancelled okay, a year so before three years it came after, out in 2019. Yeah, so three years after they announced the game initially, so I bet they were probably... I, I am seriously, I'm willing to bet that there is a version of 13 Sentinels done on a development kit at, at Vanillaware. Because like, I'm betting the only actual thing that was stopping the back was like, they had to focus on the PS4 version as opposed to it was holding them back. Because clearly while playing 13 Sentinels, there's never a point where you're like, oh, okay, here's where it's a PS4 game, you know? Well, there's one thing. There's Because, in... like, I've... I... Oh, sorry. Oh, there's just one little thing where the frame rate basically crashes in combat when you attack too many enemies at the same time. It people... drops, like, so people... low. People that but like i'm playing on a pro and obviously i haven't seen every combat encounter i'm playing on normal on a ps4 pro i've not encountered any slowdown okay so you're gonna try something the next time that you play it okay there's one move what well, i don't know that i don't remember the name of the move but you basically move one of your flying units and you can shoot bullets from every direction so you can hit the enemies in the sky on the field everywhere oh, yeah, yeah, around yeah. it's you. like the, the like basically going when there's like a hundred enemies in a cluster yeah and you go in with like jump the homing in. missile not the homing with the long range missile and it just does everything yeah i've done that one of like because there's a trophy for like killing 150 enemies in one attack okay exactly like, well I've... it drops on on the regular maybe that's because you played on the pro b i know that we all played on the standard ps4 so that might be it but it dropped extremely low like i'm not talking like what we just talked about with scramble and and yeah, I, 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 I've, I've seen what you're talking about because I remember I, in my, I think it was my one of my earlier videos talking about 13 Sentinels. Uh, someone tweeted at me their footage of them playing, and yeah, you're right. I've seen it running, and it like it's like it, it it turns into a slideshow. Yeah, yeah, it it it, it yeah it, it drops. But again, for me, it's not a deal breaker. So I just wanted to point that out. It's probably the only little thing that I was wondering, man. On Vita, that would have been even worse, probably, for the combat when there's you attack multiple enemies. Like, I don't see any issues with the story, of course. It's just... It's a visual novel. There's n basically nothing going on on screen at the same... There's not multiple things. I'm pretty sure it can work easily. But the story sequence... Uh, the combat sequences, I could see, like, struggling a bit on, on Vita. If it was struggling on a regular PS4 or so. Mm -hmm. But I... What was the reason you... Well, we're talking about it. What, what was... What's the... Why... Why did he cancel it on Vita? Because it was going to well, flop even harder? Is that the reason why? No, honestly, yeah, I, I'm willing to bet one of the actual biggest criticism 13 Sentinels has against it that you just can't change, at least right now, its biggest restraint, not even the marketing, it being only on PS4, I think is one of its biggest sales hindrances. The amount of people I've seen, like, why had you, like, why have you made this grandiose rts visual novel game and made it on one of the least visual novel rts friendly setups ever because like you're not wrong everything from the hud to it it was like it was clearly designed to be a ps vita and ps4 game like would have used the touchscreen for all the consciousness stuff even like the touchscreen in the side of like rts elements would have made mm -hmm. made things helpful but like the biggest factor with it was the game was bleeding money they literally ran out of budget two years before the game came out. Um, that's why they re-released Dragon's Crown on PS4 and sold the demo. Originally, the only way you could play the prologue was you had to buy a Vanillaware game that re-released with it, or you could buy it for like 20 bucks. And that was just a way of them being like, dude, we have no money. <laughs> mm. And one of the big interesting things about Vanillaware and Atlas Japan's publishing agreements is Atlas as a publisher is very hands off in terms of the development of the game. Atlas Japan is not brave enough to be like, okay, so it's a time travel visual novel <laughs> in the eighties, primarily 2d hand drawn. And it's an RTS with tower defense elements. Oh, and you want to sell it for $80. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll fund that. How long? Seven years. No, you want eight years. Yeah, we can do that. We'll, we'll just give you infinite money. So a lot of Vanillaware's money actually comes from themselves. Yeah. Uh, interesting. If you, I, I really want to do a video talking about Odin Sphere. 
Odin Sphere had a crazy development of Odin Sphere started life as a Sega Saturn game and kept getting moved onto different console generations because of how long it took for them to afford to make the game on their own. Uh, so Atlas Japan has pretty much only ever been like this. We will pay to market the game. We will pay to publish the game digitally and physically, but we do not pay for all of the development. There is obviously some they pay for, but that is why you keep seeing Vanillaware games getting re-released because it's just like, hey, we need money. Like, mm -hmm. So that was one of the big things of... 13 Sentinels was going really, really long, and unlike a game like Dragon's Crown, like, where Dragon's Crown got delayed forever, but you look at that game, you're like, holy moly. Like, this game is insane for what you've, like, thought up and done. Uh, 13 Sentinels is a lot less flashy and easy to just show someone as, like, hey, we need more time. I'm like, dude, this is, yeah. like, I've looked at the same sunset for six years. I think this game is ready to ship. <laughs> It's like there's a lot of just like reused kind of everything with it. So they got to a point where they were initially like, okay, let's cut uh, what will be the, at the time, less selling uh, platform. PS4 is going to make up sales the most internationally. Vita definitely would have sold better in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I even I even think now, like, if they just put out a, like a Switch or a uh, Vita version of it, it would sell if better just because the way that story like that story yeah. like i've played almost half of it through remote play even though i'm home and there's like my nice big fancy tv like there's no reason to play 13 sentinels on a giant 4k tv yeah like it still looks good even on a vita's resolution Agreed. so it was more the system wasn't the problem the limitations weren't the problem it's just that they looked at their money and they were like we have to put this out on something let's just put this out on what will get it out the fastest and by the time the game was finally done, Atlas had already um, done their last Vita game with Catherine Fullbody. And just because of various other factors, Catherine Fullbody didn't sell great in general, let mm -hmm. alone the Vita version. So Atlas was probably like, okay, do you want to do the Vita version? And they're like, eh, we'll be fine. Because in, important to remember, at launch, 13 Sentinels didn't do great. did way better than it did in America, but it sold, like, a pretty soft, like, I think less than 50,000 units up until people started talking about it in the new year, and then in the new year, it was sold better. That's why you're seeing all of this merchandise come out of Japan now, a year after its release, as opposed to the year it came out. Mm -hmm. And that's my tet talk of why there is no Vita version of 13 Sentinels, well, even though the game clearly was and forever will be. Uh, also, Vita one thing game. I do want to just say, because people people ask about it a lot, there's no Switch version, not because Atlas hates the Switch. Vanillaware is just a crazy small company. Like, like less yeah. than 30 employees small. So, they've never really had the manpower to port unless they're just totally re-releasing a game again. Mm -hmm. They've never done stuff on PC. They've never really ported things out. Like, the laziest port they've ever done was Dragon's Crown Pro. And that was because they ran out of money. So, even that yeah. was a cheap port. <laughs> oh, definitely. I, I got it. And, yeah. It's... <laughs> it's, it's it, it, just, it just sucks minimal, because, like, I think... Basically. I think at the very least, even taking Switch out of the equation... I think Vanillaware would actually super, super exceed on PC. Because you look at stuff like Grim Grimoire, another one of their, like, RTS-like games, mm -hmm. which, by the way, Grim Grimoire is an RTS game that actually has hand-drawn animations and attacks for yep. everything. Like, the fact that a PS2 game's battles look better than 13 Sentinels is kind of <laughs> jank, but, like, that game is trying to be something totally different anyways. But, like, that game was an RTS game on a horizontal view, almost like a StarCraft or something, with a PS2 controller instead of a mouse. Yep. So and it's it, like like they they've always, they've always just kind of gone to their own tune of like they're aware of where their market is, but I don't think they're open enough to the idea of expanding to new western markets just because they're so small. They're probably they just don't think it can be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm not expecting them to port the game anywhere else personally. Which, which is a shame because like I think I think you can make a really cool enhanced version of 13 Sentinels. Leave the story the same and keep the keep the gameplay mechanics the same but just like make them a little bit like more poppier like gameplay wise. Yeah. Like I know I know big complaint people have on top of the visuals of the gameplay is it definitely does sort of feel like the battles even on hard are a little too easy and they feel a little bit too rinse and repeaty. Mhm. Mm yeah. It makes sense. That would be great though. And there's like 
the game did kind of did pretty well in Japan from what I heard. So oh, the, the game the game killed it beyond yeah. made its money up uh, in, in in Japan. Japan. Exactly. So if they were to re-release it, I feel like a Switch version would make sense because of Japan. <sighs> see, see, that's why I was like. Uh, just think, if they made the PS5 version like the definitive version, I think this game like it could have made that game like a million a million seller. And like we're far make from the that, PS5 man. version have all hand drawn animations. Like show show us what like because like when you see those scenes in the story of the kaiju from the human's perspective, it's like wow these things are scary. Mm -hmm. But you never really get that feeling of them in mass Definitely. unless it's before a battle or mm -hmm. after. Exactly. So, like, really seeing what that battle would have been like, not from, like, a military perspective, I think just left a lot. Like, obviously, they're leaving things up to your imagination to save money, but, like, I think that they could do it, but it, it just would have taken so much more work and so much more money than I think they're probably comfortable risking mm -hmm. it on. Nah, I agree. I agree. Makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, we have a question in the chat that I want to answer from Mark Louis Garcia. Uh, he asked the question as well on, on Discord, so I definitely want you to, to answer his question. And I know that you're a big Persona 4 Arena fan, so I wanted to ask you about, well, two things. Do you think they're done with Persona 5 spinoffs? And also, do you think if they were to do one, if does Arena make sense to you? Um... I, I, I talked about this recently on my latest podcast and a couple others because Arena always comes up. Arena's got such a hardcore following and fan base, yeah. even outside of fighting game fans. I think Arena is definitely done for the time being. I mean, it ha has been since 2014. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's sad for me to say this, but yes, like, Arena's been dead for six oh, years. Oh, you're right. We gotta, yeah. move, we, we gotta move on. Um, on top of that, though, I think Persona 5 has one spinoff left. Oh, you think and so? And I think I was talking about I think I was talking about this with Happy of they pretty much have two choices. And the easy choice, I'll say for last, just because it's a little bit more fun to kind of speculate. I think in my head, if they want, they could actually do a pretty interesting proper sequel to Persona 5 Royal, but focus a lot more on the Akechi side of things. But I think the safer and probably more fun game for the final spin-off would have to be uh, Scramble 2, just because Scramble 2, mm. it is already one of the best-selling spinoffs in the entire series history, and that dev team has already said, hey, we're up for it. Let's make this like a full-on world-traveling affair. Like, so, it, it basically writes itself Scramble 2. Hmm. Even if we don't have any <laughs> any news for, for our version of Scramble? Well, yeah, and that's where you get into the tough thing of... I. It, it, it's tough because I, I think if Scramble 2 does happen, you still have to wait a ways to get it. Because remember, Scramble took Koei Tecmo over three and a half years to develop. That's a lot. It is, but you look at that game and you're like, I see it. I see where all the time and effort went to this game. Like that game, yeah. like that game has no spinoff. Like there, that game has no extras modes. There are main missions. There are side quests. There is New Game Plus, and that is it. Like they they put all their effort into making a 50 mm -hmm. hour long story. And, like, it, it paid off in the end. Like, that is a solid, solid experience from beginning to end. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's true. I'm saying this, but I haven't played it. But I can't wait to play it. I keep hearing good things, but unfortunately, I cannot play it. So, yeah, eventually, we'll get it. Huh? We're sure that we'll, we'll get it. What about DLC for Scramble? Could this I happen? think they've definitely waited too long. Um, their last chance to do it would have been an expanded version announced at TGS. Now it's been way too long. So anything they would have done, kind of like a Mario Odyssey 2, of like, Mario Odyssey was perfect for DLC. At this point, just make another game. So that's kind of where I'm at with Scramble. Okay. Of like, I'm sure a catchy and Kasumi DLC would have been great. Yeah. Just put it in the sequel. It makes sense. It makes sense. And they could just reuse all the, like, assets and models that they have for the first game. So definitely not a three-year development cycle and now Koei Tecmo is bigger than it ever was so yeah they could probably make it work but then yeah. would it be a PS5 game or mm. a like PS I think it would I think it would definitely depend on the scope and the size of the project on top of like there were definitely games that came out on PS4 that could have been PS3 if they wanted but because the PS4 and Xbox one were such knockout successes it was like, why hold ourselves back and make last-gen versions? Because, like, remember in that transitionary period, there are those times where you look at ports and you have to decide, 
were you hindered on current gen or next gen? Like one of my favorite things I love looking at mm -hmm. is like, remember Watch Dogs One had a Wii U version? Yep. <laughs> it's like just like think of stuff like that that's just like so crazy to compare it to. Whereas like uh, now looking at the new Watch Dogs, Watch Dogs Legions, a lot of the reviews have been coming out. People are like, yeah, there's a lot of technical issues on current gen. A lot of like stuff like I'm excited to see for it. Like I'm excited for Watch Dogs Legions. I want to see what it looks like on PS5. I could play it today on PS4. I'd rather wait and see what it looks like mm -hmm. on the brand new system. Did you see that the, there was like a um, crashing issue with the game on Series X? Hilar yeah, hilariously on a mission called 404 Error, there is a bug <laughs> on serious? Xbox One on Xbox One X <laughs> that causes your Xbox to overheat and crashes yeah, the game. Yeah, okay, it's that's like what I really, heard, really but really I didn't funny. know that it was on that particular mission. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's ironic. Um, it, it was extra funny because it's only on the Xbox One X, uh, not the Series X or PS5, and that was the specific version Ubisoft told everyone to play because they wanted them to experience the best console version without giving people next-gen codes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I know. It's, uh, Ubisoft games, personally, I don't get excited for them anymore. I just... it, for me, it's like every 10, I'll find one that I get really into. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. I used to be one of those guys, though. I legitimately like every Assassin's Creed from 1 to Rogue. I played every one every year, and I was like, that was my jam. Like, Damn. people always say I bought a, I bought a Vita for for Golden. Uh, no, dude, I bought a Vita for, for Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed 3 Liberations. <laughs> oh, wow. Interesting. Interesting. I was not aware of that. I dropped that, um, what was it, Revelations on PS3? That's when I. Fell oh off, yeah, I yeah, think. that was yeah, that was one of the in between ones. Another yeah. weird game that had tower defense missions. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh man, I still have a bunch of questions about SMT five that I definitely want to ask you because you know a lot of things, sir. <laughs> I know too much, and it, it hurts <laughs> me because I love talking about this stuff all the time. Hence, why I do a weekly podcast. Please check out uh, Shin Megami Tensei Network. Absolutely. But like. What's sad about it is, like, sometimes I'll get people, and especially this came up with the scramble stuff of people being like, because when the scramble was absent from Koei Tecmo's financial reports, I put a tweet out there because I got a lot of people, basically anytime scramble gets brought up, people like to m mention me just because I don't think a day goes by where I don't tweet about that game. <laughs> Like seriously, if that when that game gets announced, I'm expecting somebody at Atlas to send me a smug email and say, "All right, <laughs> shut up now about this game." Because um, they because they know I'm very vocal about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but what's so funny is like the, the big thing was I told people like, "Hey guys, it's not canceled. It's just like seriously this." When they mentioned it on their last financial report, all of these news outlets wrote up stories and were like, "Hey." scrambles announced look it's in this financial report that means it's coming any day now and they just made atlas look bad which like in terms of reporting to investors they have to because like why not just do it so atlas contacted them and were like hey don't don't mention scramble like <laughs> it's just gonna like you can talk about it once it's announced I'm like Pl please don't mention scramble in your upcoming earnings um because they, they don't even know themselves for, what to do with it well, yeah, but, like, for Koei Tecmo, it's just so funny because, like, for Koei Tecmo, they've already made the game. They have nothing to do, but they're just going to keep making money. Like, they make money on every copy sold of that game. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they would let their investors know, hey, this yeah. game that we made, we're just going to keep getting more money for it. Um, and But what's funny is I had some people uh, reach out to me privately and were like, hey, how did you, like, how did you know, like, this was, like, said? And I was like, well, A, I just, like, asked somebody, but, like, I can't just, like, oh, hey, blah, 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 and PR? Yeah, blah blah blah. Just tweeted. Like, here's the DM he gave me. Like, here, here's him saying this because, like, there's like, I I want the world to know why it wasn't mentioned, so people aren't doom and gloom about it and think it's dead. Mm -hmm. But obviously, from Atlas's perspective, it doesn't behoove them for anyone to talk about the game until it's announced. Because right now, they've somehow found the way to like, because you know that old saying of all press is good press. For Scramble, any any press is bad press. Until that game's <laughs> announced, every time it's mentioned, Atlas just Atlas just hides their hands in their head and they're like, oh, 
God, please don't yep. talk about that game. Talk about Yakuza. Do you guys want to talk about Yakuza? <laughs> Have I mentioned how Yakuza 7 is the persona of games? Guys, talk about uh, Yakuza, please. Everything is the persona of something nowadays. I at least uh, I at least appreciate it a lot. When I called out uh, Greg Miller for his kind of funny video headline uh, calling Yakuza... Uh, the Yakuza Meeks persona. I at least appreciated us. Uh, so, so one of the people uh, at PR on uh, Sega, I, I he he had actually emailed me replying to a different question. Uh, they were like, "Hey, I can't say anything officially, but thanks for thanks for calling out that." Because <laughs> like even <laughs> even Sega's like, "Hey, please." Please don't call Yakuza Persona, because like, <laughs> if you even play that game at all, you'll know that the game is just, it's Dragon Quest. It's not even Persona. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. And and 13 Sentinels with Persona with robots. Did you see that one? I did. Oh. I, I have to say, though, <laughs> I, I really hope, like, the PR and Atlas, like, you know, it's like, when I ask them questions, it's got to be, like, the stuff they, like, never get asked. Like, the last time I heard back from Atlas was after, like, asking for a month. This is what I wanted to know. Not, where's my free game? <laughs> Not, when can I interview someone? Not, what, what, why are you still ignoring me? It was, I'd been trying to find out the specific details of how... <laughs> of how, uh... Because uh, if you look at the back of the box for 13 Sentinels, it says it actually supports PS4 Pro, which is very rare for Atlas games. So I was trying to find out what the specific enhancements were from the development side. Mm -hmm. And it took them like forever, but they finally actually got back to me because like they never at like they never advertised it as eh, it supports PS4 Pro. Well, what's interesting is like it supports full 4K. Um, it actually does have a native uh, resolution boost and performance boost, but they just never marketed it that way. Mm -hmm. Just because it's one of those things I wanted to cover in my review, but like no one who's covering 13 Sentinels stops and goes, "Hmm, what's the PS4 Pro version like though?" Because you look at that game and you're like, eh, whatever. It probably runs on a smartphone. Yeah, because it doesn't necessarily need the Pro to be, like, a good running game. It's just not an impressive, technically speaking, it's not an impressive game. It's not Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not God of War. It's not Ratchet & Clank, anything like that. It's just the art style makes the game, not, like, the graphics necessarily, if that makes sense. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, let's jump into SMT5 uh, now. I still have a lot of things to ask you on uh, on that one. Um, what's the... Mm, okay. Do you think Nintendo... Oh my god. King, King Narukami brings up a great point that I have to ask you really quick, David. No How problem. frustrating is it that even after getting released three years later, Royal cannot run at 60 FPS? I feel like there's no reason for that. It's a PS3 like, so you game. See, people, people don't call out Royal enough. Royal is not a PS4 game. That is a PS3 game that only released on PS4. Like, Royal looks good, but there's nothing on Royal that you think would explode a PS3. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But, again, I that's another, that's another good point. And I'm going to say something very similar to what I just said with 13 Sentinels. Royal doesn't need a higher frame rate. It runs great and it looks great the way it is at least that's think, my opinion i i think you're coming from a very interesting opinion of you've played persona 5 always at 30 but like imagine like being me before i played royal i beat scramble and scramble plays at 4k 60 fps on a mm. ps4 pro so going from that to that is then like oh sorry not 4k it was 1080 but Going from looking at Persona 5 models and 60 FPS to then 30, I thought like something was wrong with my game. Wow. Because it looks so Jumping smooth, especially, cause, like, especially, especially just because like the, the flow of animation on all the character models is so nice for the most part. Yeah, exactly. Like For me, that, that was not a problem, personally. Mm. But I see where you're coming from, though. Definitely. It's, I mean, it's a PS3 game. You're playing it on PS4 Pro and it's almost the same performance when it comes to the frame rate like like the chat mentions the load times were better and stuff like that but I, again that's a re-release so that's normal stuff in my opinion again but atlas with their re-releases sometimes you know they're going to add content but charge for it <clears throat> nocturne um okay um yeah that was that was, that was the question that i wanted to ask you i definitely want to, to hear your thoughts on it do you think nintendo has something to do with worldwide release for smt5 
Oh, what one thousand percent? Yeah. I don't think. All right. It's not. There an is Atlas's nothing actually to do it. So yeah. So basically, and I'll be curious how people will actually feel about this. I think there are going to be aspects of Atlas involved with the localization for SMT five, but I think it's going to be like a Tokyo Mirage Sessions thing where. It's primarily Nintendo's treehouse localizing it with Atlas supervising it, because Nintendo can't really trust Atlas with their given proof, like with their given track record. Like, if it wasn't for Nintendo, that game would come out a year after the um, a year after the Japanese version. Great example is look at this: um, SMT four released, and this was seven years ago, over seven years ago. It's two crazy. months, two months from America to, to Japan. Japan. Yep. I remember and that was with Nintendo helping. Huh. So now they're able to do worldwide. Hmm. Hmm. And, and I mean, and they and they know the difference, and like they they just know it's like it cuts down from importing, which means they make the most money in each territory as possible. Uh, I, I forgot who it was on Twitter. It might have actually been Happy or someone else uh, mentioned on Twitter. Think of how many copies of Scramble have been sold by people who were importing it. Hmm. A bunch of people. I mean, I saw a bunch of people, probably a lot of copies, but at the same time, for a game like SMT, people are going to double dip. A lot of them are going to double dip. If you're hardcore enough to import it for like a three months delay, like SMT4, you're crazy enough to double dip. Yeah, that, that, so, that, that's, a, that's, a very, that's a very fair point with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, you I, agree, Nintendo's behind it, probably. Definitely. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> w w without a factor of a doubt, it's just, it, it, it sucks that like this company that I love so much for like the work they do with their games, like the the Western branch of Atlas just continues to be it, it. It feels less like a company and more like a publisher the longer they go on, which really sucks. Because I remember my favorite era of Atlas West in USA was not when they were bringing out Persona Four. Or Persona 5 it was like when they were publishing weird games like when they, like when Atlas was just being like hey man do you want to like publish a horror game on PS4 or do you want to like publish a pinball RPG on PS Vita sure why not let's let's publish whatever <laughs> let's like localize these games that like when, when they were more of a localizer as opposed to just being an Atlas publisher is when I think they were at their prime. They were yeah. probably not as profitable as they are now, and I'm sure they had to severely cut back on staff after they merged with Sega West. But, like, it, it, it just kind of sucks that, like, a lot of the major problems that, like, if you're a Sonic fan, you'll definitely relate to this. A lot of the problems about why Sega sucks in terms of making a good Sonic game kind of goes into how broke they are right now in terms of what they put into money and why. And a lot of that kind of trickles down to the rest of the company when you think about it. Um, mm -hmm. If you're Yakuza, you get money because you sell in Japan. Yep. If you're Persona, you get money because you're a Persona. If you're <laughs> anything else, you're lucky to come out. Yep. If you're 13 Sentinels? Mm. Yeah, if you're 13 Sentinels, you're Red Vanilla Ware and you can, do whatever, <laughs> you can do whatever you want because Vanilla Ware has been very lucky over the years of hitting success with games just long enough to get their next game finished yeah and then barely being able to like because like you think about it, like they're that team who stretches that one loaf of bread a whole year basically like they can barely, they can barely make it last until it's done they're like doing the really tiny like you ever seen it like jack and the beanstalk um mickey mouse cartoon where they're eating the world's thinnest slice of bread with like a half a carved bean sandwich <laughs> that's basically that's vanilla it. where it's <laughs> Yeah, that's basically it. Oh man, yeah. Hopefully they, they 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 release more stuff in the future and they don't like close down or anything like that because they make quality content. But unfortunately, they're like most of their games are like hidden gems. I like to use that term, but they're underrated. All the recent games, like you brought up Grim Grimoire, like I'm sure like probably ten people in the West have heard of this game maximum. I've now, heard of what it. really what really sucks about what you say though. Is we love Atlas, mm -hmm. and I obviously wish no ill onto any of the Western staff there. I think all of us as fans can agree. If Atlas had their games published by any other developer right now, sorry, any other publisher right now, mm -hmm. their games would be better handled. Sadly, I have to agree. 
Like, you remember when there was the rumors of, is Microsoft going to buy Sega? People were like, oh, God, please don't buy Sega. Like, I don't want to play Persona on Xbox. All of that aside, Microsoft, the guys who can't even figure out how to release a Halo right in seven years, <laughs> Microsoft would promote Persona in 13 Sentinels better than Atlas West would. Yep. And, there, and there's just no, like, there's no logic against it. Outside of if you just don't like Microsoft, it doesn't matter how you feel about the publisher. Because guess what? A lot of Atlas fans, much like ourselves, we also complain about Atlas West because they do a bad job at selling their own game. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm being, like, I'm trying to be, as much as I love them, I'm still going to be critical over uh, to them because, hey, same thing for Nintendo. I'm known for being, like, a big Nintendo fan, but when they do bullshit, I I'll call them out on it. Like that, those limited editions things that they're doing at the moment, it's it's dumb, dumb. Like it doesn't make sense, and I'm not going to blindly say, oh, it's okay, I don't care. It's, I know that it's at the end of the day, it's just video games, but still, it's like shady practices. Like that Fire Emblem edition, I'm salty. I was not able to get it. Like it's it just sucks. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But hey, we'll, we'll keep being critical and. <laughs> Hopefully they, and that, folks, they, is why Spencer doesn't get games for review unless they're Persona. <laughs> That's already a good first step. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, like I, 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 I don't know. Like, it, 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 I'll say this at the very least, because I, I, I don't ever get people asking me this, but it is one of those things I think people need to understand. Having a video game to review early is really cool until you realize you cannot talk to anyone else unless they're reviewing it. Because like, it's, it's really like depressing that if I wasn't friends with Gnarly, for example, I couldn't talk to anyone about uh, Royal with. Because, like, outside of that, I didn't really have any other friends uh, playing the game. Because I had it about a month before it came out. Eh, like, about two two weeks or so. And, like, there's that thing of just, like, I want to talk to you guys about this game, <laughs> but I just can't. Oh, I listened to you guys' podcast of Royal before I played it. So, <laughs> that was a bad move on my part, but I still did it. I, I'm just more amazed that you didn't get scared off by like a four and a half hour long podcast of a game before oh, you man. played it. <laughs> I don't care. I listen to podcasts. I have way too much time on my hands. <laughs> way too much time on my hands. Like I listen to way too many podcasts. I'm not kidding. Like since I found out yours, I think I listen to every episode. And it's like it's your stuff, but a lot of other people's stuff in the community as well. Like I, I re that's that's my thing. I like to listen. <laughs> people talk about random stuff that i like it just i at least still take pride of i think i'm still the only podcast at least in english who has actually covered uh scramble at least the actual one i think so i do i think so from what i saw so um, props on that <laughs> yeah i enjoyed all the like uh 300 views on youtube and like a, i think like 2000 <laughs> downloads but yeah it was it, it, it's one of those things that I, that episode i couldn't have been more excited to do that impressions video after beating scramble because even though it wasn't a spoiler cast um shane and i uh by the way shout out to uh shane brain uh does a ton of great uh fire emblem content if you don't even like uh warrior stuff I was just so excited to like have someone else who would import the game so we could just gush about mm. it because it's so hard. Even though it seems like I gush about that game all the time, I have been keeping in a lot of stuff about it because there's a lot of surprises that game has to offer. But even eight months later, I still don't want to spoil from people. Mm -hmm. Because of like, so, like the whole story of it seems very interesting and, and, from and what not, you told and not us. even and not even the story that was the funniest part like we had an almost three hour long podcast talking about the gameplay hmm. well that's the mo that's the focus of the game so but see then that's the crazy thing is like no the game story is actually very uh deep and like in terms of like where it's going and like what it does like it, it, it's like i'm i would not be surprised if when Scramble finally comes out in English, I still I end up doing a five hour long spoiler cast on that game. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm already I'm already wondering. By the time I finally finish Thirteen Sentinels, my plan is to do a very spoilery spoilery filled review, and then do a spoiler cast proper with a couple other people similar to like you. But I'm already like, oh my god, like how long am I going to be talking about this game for? Because like Thirteen <laughs> Sentinels just goes into so many crazy directions of like, I'm amazed you guys kept it to two hours. 
Oh yeah, well, I had a lot of questions about off-topic stuff, and Kuro was not done with the game when he joined, so... We had to watch out for spoilers, so in the end it was not that much of a spoiler cast, like we didn't dive that deep into the story, but more of everything surrounding the game, like we probably talked about the marketing campaign for like an hour or so, so <laughs> it was mostly focused on around, like everything around the game, so definitely if you want to do something for the story, I'll count me in because there's a lot to say here and definitely I <laughs> if you do a spoiler cast you should plan ahead of time for for <laughs> a good amount of time to, to you, you would be you would do uh, definitely you'd be a good chair because yeah at the very least I I've, oh, I've always had since day one uh, I cannot get Ozzy to shut up about wanting to do a spoiler cast for that game so he's been my He's been my nagging ex-wife, uh, metaphorically, in terms of, did you beat it yet? Have you beat it yet? Where you at? What's your percentage at? Where you at? Where you at? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it until I beat it. Like, I don't I don't even <laughs> want to, like, tell him if I like it or not yet. Oh, man. No, I, I heard he liked it. His review's not held, but I heard he liked the game. I, I haven't heard anyone say the game's bad. Like, everyone agrees that it's, it's very unique and a great experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't definitely don't want to uh, to hold you on for too long, so I'll ask you everyone here in the chat. First of all, thank you for being here. We've been like over 30 people for the whole thing, so thank you all so much for being here. If you guys could drop a like on the podcast, I would really appreciate it. It helps a lot. If you guys have any questions, I'll start to ask uh, Spencer, and I'll also give my take on a bunch of Discord questions that we had. If you guys want to drop questions here in the chat, I'll we'll try to answer them as. as quickly as possible and efficiently <laughs> um we have some random stuff okay so but uh, i know that you don't mind so <laughs> uh okay we answered that but um nocturne pc that that can happen at some point you know steam wasn't the database for the game that the data mine did that like we, we talked about before do you think that there's a chance that it, the game comes to to steam at some point I, I, I'm not even like. Is there a chance? I've just been telling. You're pretty people, sure, when right? The, when it comes out in the West, it, it's going to have a PC version. The same as Scramble. Scramble is going to come out day and date in the West on PC. Yeah. Oh, you, day and date. Oh yeah, day and date. Because I oh, think wow. about it like this: the Koei Tecmo is just like they're they're absolute pros at porting their games to any console. Like technically, on paper, if you're watching PS4 gameplay of scramble i'm like how did this run on a switch and like even the same thing with like uh age of calamity and stuff like that so like they're just porting in technical masterminds like and they are aware that the west they don't sell the best all the time but their pc market and their xbox market they always cater to mm -hmm. koei tecmo no matter how big or small of a company you think they are they always do as many platforms as yep. possible and that's one of my biggest things I really respect about them. So, like, yep, same. the only thing stopping a PC release for any of these games would be Atlas saying, I don't like money. And as the Persona 4 Golden release has shown us, they've already said, hey, if we can do more games on PC, we're going to do more games on PC. Yep. Oh, very interesting. I would definitely like to see that because, especially with the new info that you gave me, that, like, it's such an easy process with Unity to bring it to PC. Like, I don't see why they wouldn't do it. But my answer to this question is pretty much... The same, except that I'm not as confident as you are, but I understand your point, so definitely a good thing if the game comes at some point, and I definitely want it to come at some point. Another cool version about, another cool question, sorry, about uh, Nocturne comes from uh, Zach H, again, from Discord. He asked if you think we'll get a patch uh, or like an update or anything like that for the compressed music for Nocturne at some point down the line. So... I doubt it. It sucks because, like, yeah, it sucks. It it should already not be there as like an option. Like, it should be a toggleable thing. I will say this though, like Dragon Quest, for example. If they're smart, they will with the Western release patch it in and then maybe sell it or update it in Japan as like DLC. Um. Yeah, it, it's just very odd because like they've already said they can change out music in the form of like we have SMT one through Apocalypse music, so like, like why not you just do it? And fans are obviously like, hey, obviously like it, it, it's like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Only if you pick one side or the other. Like if it was just the uncompressed music, you would have just as many people being 
and like where's the original midi files like i want to hear the original yeah. soundtrack but, but again if, if they do the orchestral know... and the official soundtrack there's no reason to take out the the compressed music now just give the option like dragon quest 11 s no yeah so it's like they've kind of shot themselves in the foot by keeping the original one in there as the only option and then adding in the music dlc for all the other stuff because by adding in more music you're showing no 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 this this game engine can support more music files switching over in there so mm -hmm. i don't know if it's just they're kind of stubborn about it if it's a licensing thing but I, I could see it definitely being one of those things that eventually gets put in there because it just seems like such an obvious it seems like just such an obvious goodwill move that it's mm -hmm. been one of the weirdest oversights um of the game in terms of like i would say there's very few kind of knocks you can sort of give to nocturne in terms of like things it's doing wrong but yeah in terms of like just adding a couple other quality of life features it just definitely shows they wanted to get this game running as quickly as possible they wanted to make sure it didn't have any crazy bugs or whatever but they really didn't like put in the time to be like hey we made this easier we updated this we changed this They're like no Mm -hmm. Nocturne Remastered is literally just Nocturne with voices and yep. it's in widescreen. Yep, basically. So you think it maybe it'll happen at some point? I'm, I'm guessing if like there's enough kind of chest pounding in the West for it, hopefully there is, as like it's mm -hmm. an easier way to build a hype for the international version, but. For sure. I don't know. It, it's just one of those crazy things of I, I can see it never getting changed, but then look at other things like look at the Final Fantasy HD collections where like. 10 and 10 2 kept getting new features exclusive to it with each port it was getting yeah. so like by the first port on vita all the way up to like the pc and switch and xbox one port they they, they kept adding stuff to the game but they weren't always being retroactive about it so it's hard to say okay well thanks for the the answer for my part um on that one uh i feel like they yeah they could they, definitely they could do it uh at some point will they do it i don't know i don't want to say no but i don't know because they from what we see what we saw from from this sport it really seems unfortunately like they want to keep it as minimal as possible like you just said they, they added voice acting which is which is amazing but that's pretty much it like the little additions that they did they put it behind the paywall with as, as dlc so as much as i would like it i mm, i'm not i'm not sure but i I feel like it's possible at some point maybe maybe it could happen definitely so yeah oh uh we got peter parker here uh, <laughs> who donated yeah, sh sh five dollars peter parker with the super chat i have to say this because this gets asked all the time because everyone wants that's a royal good question on PC. royal on pc it's coming it's 100 oh, yeah. coming do not worry about it never coming the problem is they are still under exclusivity contract with sony uh, and if you go off of what they did with stuff like Catherine, and they took about a year and a half to bring it over to Switch, you can expect that sort of same timeline. But the problem is you could release Persona 5 on PC mm -hmm. as early as even like a year ago. But if you look at something like Catherine Classic releasing a month before Full Body in Japan, mm -hmm. you're just basically teeing yourself up for disappointment of like, okay... We'll give you the version as quickly as possible, but it's the inferior version. And because of that, I think it's just leading up to stuff like, yeah, there's really no reason Catherine Full Body isn't on PC. It's like actually kind of embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Like the worst version of Catherine, well, not the worst version, the most recently released version of Catherine and F Full Body are so separate products that it's like, I guess, like, if you want the original experience, it's cool that Classic is there because Classic does have stuff that Full Body doesn't. But it's just, like, it just sort of leads to more confusion, which is why mm -hmm. Vanilla P5 Classic isn't on Steam. You'll definitely see it. You just... It, it, it's just that weird thing of, like, if there's a push to port it to multiple systems at once, which I think Atlas is going to do, that's why they've been so silent. So that's why I'm thinking just make a PS5 version that runs at 4K60 switch version that runs it got whatever it can and a steam version that just does rtx everything mm -hmm. and you know what hey throw it on xbox because god knows xbox would piss their pants to have persona 5 anything oh yeah oh i agree with basically everything that you said uh again peter thank you so much for the donation really appreciate it um also i also think that yes it's it's happening at some point 
he also said <laughs> another message um, down the line in the in the chat. He said they better not release vanilla on PC. It better be Wario. Do you know what I want them to do? And please don't don't get I, I you won't. But in the chat, please don't get mad at me for for saying this. They should put vanilla on Switch at this point. The the the, the people that are crying on every single tweet that Atlas does for a Persona version, I wish they get vanilla. Like they deserve it. <laughs> to, it shut be, them off. Like even if it, it creates an outrage, like the, I don't it would care. Be the enough. funniest thing ever. Oh yeah. Especially because much like Catherine on Switch, it would be so underwhelming in terms of sales. They would forever have ammo for. Well, you guys didn't buy it on Switch, so that's why we're not bringing it over. Oh, but if they bring them, oh, <laughs> that's again, that's a no, an, another topic, but. Oh man, I, I can't stand the people that are like, the, it's disrespectful at some point. Yes, you can make your voice heard by asking for something, like asking for information about Scramble, but don't harass them. Like, if they're, they're trying to market 13 Sentinels for once, please don't ask for a Persona 5 Switch port in the comments. That that bothers me so much. Also important to remember, as we've mentioned with our many, many criticisms of Atlas West, Atlas West doesn't make anything they localize right. at the rate of whatever they're localizing mm -hmm. so asking them to port a game instead of japan doesn't you're just making anything. yourself look dumb that's like asking that's like asking ign to make a better skyrim it's like all we're doing is talking <laughs> about skyrim what am i gonna do about it basically am i gonna call basically. todd howard <laughs> that that makes sense like it it's again but we cannot ask like some people have like there's there's some dude on twitter that every single time that i see them they're, they're crying for a persona port on switch or they're 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 complaining about something and it's just it drains the energy out of me it's it, it, it just sucks i at least i'm able to like avoid them most of the time but sometimes i i need to reply something i <laughs> that's one of my you know not my biggest quality, but sometimes man, I need to reply. Man can only take so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a, another. Uh, we, we had other questions in the chat, the YouTube chat, that I also want to answer other than Discord. But uh, King Narukmi asked, P4G and P3 uh, FES ports on current and next gen consoles when? I'll let you go first, just because I, I I've answered this a lot before, but I, I already have my thing teed up. I'd be curious what you have to say. Um. Persona 3, I think, will get something different at some point. But Golden, on the other hand, I think is going to to, to appear on other, like it, it success on had a big success on Steam. Obviously, like we heard in the last few months, it would do extremely well on Switch as well. And yeah, three is another thing though. But four, I'm confident it's it's happening at some point. What are you thinking? So I'll be fast about this. Um, Atlas and Sega are going to release Golden and 3 in a combo pack, just like they did with Bayonetta and Vanquish for like Ooh. the little anniversary thing. Confident. Um, oh yeah, just because like, like they, 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 know, they, they know that those games would sell better as a bundle than together. Sorry, than separate. Um, and obviously Persona turning 25 next year is just like, like obviously just wait, get a couple more ports mm -hmm. queued up. Um, so expect them to come to PC, sorry, not PC. Uh, well, 3 will come to PC at the same time with console, I think, if they're smart. Um, so, by the time these all come out next year, it'll be PC, Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. Um, it will be Persona 4 Golden, obviously, but it will be Persona 3 Portable. It will not be FES. I think a lot of people okay. will be butthurt about that, but I think in the I end, would, yeah, a, lot more, a lot more people would enjoy having the... Like, it's a lot easier to say, oh, well, you're getting more content in FES and Portable's a visual novel, so why would I want that? Mm -hmm. But important to think, if you get people who play Persona 5 and then went to Persona 4, the gameplay systems aren't that drastically different that they're going to have a bad time. If you make someone play uh, automated party members in Persona 3 FES and you don't actually change that. Because like, if Nocturne's told me anything, God forbid they go back and retouch their code, so they're never going to add that in on their own for FES. Mm -hmm. uh, so okay. I think they're just going to like give the most updated version of that game and with a couple other like quality of life things. But Oh man, I sure hope you're right. 
and it, you know, it goes back to one of my big things of I always like I, I crap on FES just in the sense of like FES as a story is interesting. No one has no one in, like all right, this is a very bold thing for a lot of people don't like playing it though. It's an interesting story, but it is easily one of the worst designed parts of that game. Hmm. Which part? Just the like actual gameplay task of like going through the dungeon in oh, FES. Yeah. Like the the answer is like such a slog. Yes, it is. It is. It, it and people are going to disagree with me on on that one, but I think three aged not as well as four, in in my opinion. But hey, I hope you're right because your your idea is very exciting to say the least. Uh, Peter, again, once again, five dollars super chat. Thank you so much for the support. It means a lot. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. He says, "Is it that bad that Switch owners are harassing Atlas West?" Oh man. I described what I think, but there's I'm, I'm, there's one dude. He's he, it's Goomba, I think, on Twitter or, or something. He's there on every single Atlas post, every single post, asking or sharing a picture of a custom P5R box. It's yeah, it's that bad. It, it is that bad. It's harassment at this point. It's not just asking for a port. It, it's that bad. <laughs> what are your thoughts on it? Don't want to talk about that for too long, obviously, but. Is it really uh, that bad, um, or am I crazy? I don't think... I, I think it, it just depends on the person of, like, who you are for it. I think if you are someone like you... Like, you and I are on two different extremes of it. Uh, it, it is very annoying, but, like, for me, I laugh it off just because it's like, man, imagine, like, that being your entire existence on Twitter of just, like... It's sad. Begging for the... Begging... Like, it, it, like... If it's like the problem, like is what always gets me is when people who are like, "Well, you beg for scramble every day. You're just as bad as Break Free Persona." No, I'm like, you're no, asking dude. for news. You're asking for Bre news. Break Free Persona is asking to make a game that's already out on another platform because God forbid you buy a PlayStation Four. But like Break Free Scramble, like isn't the same thing because of like guess what? It's like the games. Like, there's nothing stopping that game from being out. So like that's why your people have such like fervor of like, of like, hey, yeah, just announce the game, dum dums. Like no part of everyone tweeting about, um, <laughs> like no part of whenever everyone's tweeting about scramble, are we like pounding our chest saying, give me the game, give me the game? No, exactly. We're asking for a, tr we're asking for an acknowledgement. <laughs> Basically, that's different. That's different. You're not out there on Thirteen Sentinels tweets asking for a port of Persona 5 or asking for a uh, Persona 5 scramble sorry you're asking for news but you're asking to, to hear something about a game that they're hiding from us for whatever reason that's different again again I don't want to spend too much time on it but I, I agree with with you as well on, on that one and I just want to clarify I don't get mad whenever I see this but I'm just like oh again when will they stop like I just wish that they would just all stop at once because it's it's tiring. Um, another great question, but hey, I think I deleted the name of the one person who asked. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but someone in the YouTube chat asked, uh, do y'all want Persona 6 with realistic graphics like The Last of Us 2 or 7 Remake or more stylish graphics like Breath of the Wild or P5? Um, my quick one is no, I don't want it to be realistic. I'm cool if they want to kind of mix it up with their art. Like, while it's easy to look at something like Persona 5, SMT, or even TMS, they are all very artistically kind of different in their own in their own like. So I would say stick with the anime art style, but feel free to start exploring more locations. Like, guys, we don't mm -hmm. always got to be in Tokyo. Like, that that's always my big thing. Like, I don't ever mind the art. I'm more of like, hey, let's mix up the setting. I agree. And anyways, to me at least, the art style matters most than, than just realistic graphics. Like, I, for me, like, a game like 13 Sentinels is more impressive than just a game that's, like, extremely realistic, looks like a movie. But that's just me, and I know that's kind of a hot take, so... Now imagine how more popular, even though I know the answer is definitely would not be. Now imagine what would happen <laughs> if The Last of Us Part 2... The, the first Last of Us still looks the way it does, but The Last of Us Part 2 just looks like Persona 5. What, what do you think would happen? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> like, th I'm no, just, that's I'm different, just... because the audience is expecting a movie. Movie-style graphics. 
like Ghost of oh, Tsushima. Or... One of my like my biggest like pet peeves is like whenever anything is cinematic and it's anime, people are like, oh, it's very Ghibli esque. I'm like, there's more than one Japanese guy making movies, guys. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. Like, why are more people not looking at per, like Persona Five and being like, yep, it's Loop on the Third inspired? No, nah, we never get that though. God forbid. Yep. Um. Okay, I'm going through the list here. Um, okay, cool question. Uh, Super Gamer Guy sixty four asks, and that was a YouTube question. I know this is way over talked about, but after SMT three HD Persona five scramble and SMT five, do you think Atlas will focus on Switch and PC ports because of the demand while they plan their next big project? Well, for starters, I have to say, uh, I'm sure everyone at Studio Zero is very upset that you forgot that they're working on Project ReFantasy, but considering that game is vaporware, don't feel that bad about it. <laughs> um, it's tough. It, Atlas has infinite, infamously been a company who has been terrible at supporting the legacy of their games, and I would... Honestly, I'd be fine if we just took a couple of years of, like, can we just, like, get a team who just, like, will just knock out a couple of really good ports or compilations while people are still working on new stuff and, like, like make it more of an even mix? Because, like, I don't want it to just be all new stuff, remix every now and then. Like, I'd be fine with, like, more remasters, but, like, let's kind of, like, get it to a case of, like, let's get to a point where... Like, look at this year. This year's a great example. If you're if you're Japanese, this year was great. You got two enhanced ports and a brand new Persona game. You got mm -hmm. Scramble, Token Raw Sessions Encore, and Nocturne. So, like, you're getting three different types of games, all from the same people, two very, uh, well, one very enhanced experience, one a little less so. Oh, man, just think about that. Think how sad that is. There was more of a budget, I bet, to make TMS Encore than there was for Nocturne Remastered. That's that's depressing now that I've said that probably, out loud. Probably. But probably. Because but yeah, Nintendo... Stuff like that where it's uh, something new and more like more stuff of various quality for their legacy, I think, would make people a lot more happy. But like if you just did a I year so. of only remasters and ports, I think people would be pretty disappointed. Yeah, they have to stretch it out. Like I don't want them to become like Capcom, for example, but I just wish they would like re-released a bit more some of their classics like persona 4 golden on steam was such a really i was really happy when they announced this because it was like the only way to play this game is to own a vita and that's very restrictive for such a game they have they own such a big library of classic games that i just wish they would make them a bit more accessible to everyone but i agree i don't want them to like drop everything at once and then just egg re-release like resident evil 4 on freaking microwaves or any something like that it's i don't want them to become too much but put a bit of quality in it like add some new stuff and re-release the games like maybe what i wished with the best thing that they could have been doing and i'm not complaining but something like nocturne but with everything that's dlc no just put it in the same package um do a bit more work with the graphics maybe and of course give us the choice for the music that would have been a really great package for the remaster. And again, I just want to stress that out. Don't I'm not complaining. I'm happy for Nocturne and I'll buy it. Definitely. I've just, got two copies. Just imagine if Capcom rubbed off on Atlas in the best of ways though. Like just think if for Scramble when it came out on Next Gen in the West, it's 120 frames, RTX, <laughs> 4K resolution. You can play as Virgil even though it's Persona 5 Scramble. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh man, but Capcom has. I at some point I was just saying that they're not Capcom, they're Portcom because they were just porting everything. See, everywhere. but Capcom, Capcom knows like how to like teal it out in a good way of like, hey, in one year we'll release Resident Evil four, five, and six, and then the next year immediately after we'll do like Resident Evil seven. Like they know a good way of like building up yeah. hype though, and that yeah, that, right. that I really appreciate about them. Whereas like Agreed. they 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 keep releasing stuff for a purpose they're not like just sitting back there being like eh, throw out a Mega Man port or something it's mm -hmm. like they they know what they're doing and like stuff like leads oh, up definitely. to things that are most unless you're a Street Fighter fan basically like unless you're a fighting game fan Capcom basically has had no misses this entire generation now yes it is sad that 
Street Fighter and Marvel's Capcom are their biggest duds this year. I mean, this generation. But, like, when you look at all the other wins they've had, no one's remembering um, Operation uh, Rack... Sorry, not Operation Rack. Shitty. Uh, Umbrella Corpse, the mm-hmm. multiplayer Unreal game. Like, they're remembering Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake. Yep. Resident Evil 7. Mm-hmm. Devil May Cry coming back, people are like... Because, like, think about it. In the same generation that they did DMC5, they also did a DMC, that remake Definitive Edition. Like, unless you're a fan like me, which there are very few of, like, there are not a lot of those people out there. I agree. There's one thing that was missing, though, that that is missing from Capcom, in my opinion. I have no clue why they're not completing the Ace Attorney trilogy. Why don't we have a re-release for 4, 5, and 6? They did one, two, and three. It did extremely well, and then no, no ports for four, five, six. I think I think it's tough because for the longest time, they knew where that series bread was getting butter, and that was DS. And DS did them really, really good, but they never replicated the same success on 3DS. And they, if you've noticed, that HD trilogy has been done a lot of times. That HD trilogy was on Wii, yeah. that was on smartphones, that was on 3DS. Switch, that was on PS4. Phones as well. Like, it's been, on, it's been on everything. But I think you're right. This latest, tr- like, release that was it last year, in 2019, they did the HD trilogy? Oh, I think it was 2018, even. So, like, it, they got a good reception from that, but they definitely kind of have to, like, I think something like that had a better reception in the run than like, remember two years ago, they released Onimusha remastered for like 20 bucks. No one remembers that board, but they just put that mm-hmm. out there. Just be like, okay, if you guys want this, like, let me know what you think. So like, I think you have a better chance of probably not. I like, I know fans want four five and six, mm-hmm. especially just cause those ones are a lot harder to kind of play unless you're doing a 3ds. But I think honestly, fans would probably enjoy do uh like the miles and the apollo games more Mm -hmm. in like that original hd treatment just because like not not because like they're really more necessary just because like i feel like but that's even more work that's even more work because like like oh well like i'm sure they do but like let's be honest i'm sure if you took those 3ds models from four five and six and put them on hd it would look like hot hot grease maybe (laughs) maybe but uh, i feel like they're missing out because yes um Investigations 2 or the new Paulo Justice game, those games would be amazing, but then there's the localization process that they have to do. Because those games are not released here. But 4, no, 5, no, 6... Yeah. yeah, they were. Not Investigations 2 and, and, and uh, the, the other Apollo Justice on 3DS. So we Another only first got one. one Miles Edgeworth and one Apollo game in English. Yes. Interesting. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, I'm, a, I'm, a fake, I'm a fake Ace Attorney fan. So but I'm pretty sure that, that. In, Investigations 2, I'm pretty sure. But Ace, uh, Apollo Justice, the second one, I don't want to give false information. But Investigations I'm 2, on, yeah. I'm already on the Ace Attorney with. Okay, we're cool. We're about to find out. <laughs> well, Aruhi in the, in the chat says that Investigations 2 is Japan only. So that I know I'm right. Yeah, fan translation. But I'm talking about an official localization. Oh my god, we're so off topic. <laughs> my lord. Yeah, you're right. There were two. Uh... So those games, they would be more work. But four, five, six, I don't want also, them to. Also, remember, the we graphics. never got the uh, Sherlock Holmes Ace Attorney games, the Great Detective ones. Nope. Those ones Fine. I really wanted to come out in the West. Yep. Yep. Uh, just no. I I don't. I want them to port it, and I'm sure they'll do it at some point because again, it's Capcom, and the first trilogy did so well. Oh, I'm sure it'll happen at some point. Um, can I ask you a really a question that I really like here, uh, but a good one? <laughs> question from Adam on Discord. He wants to know: Will we start to see more worldwide releases from Atlas after SMT Five, or will it go back to normal why do you gotta, why freedom? Do you, why do you gotta Why do you gotta ask me these depressing questions? Oh, we have some good questions. <laughs> um. No, and even if SMT5 became the next Persona 5 and sold a bajillion units, Atlas as a company in the West has to absolutely uproot and change its work pipeline. And right now, the soonest we could ever really see that happen is once Japan starts treating the West like a partner, and they're not. Mm. Like, Atlas Japan treats Atlas West like they might as well just be NIS America. 
Like, there's very little synergy that goes in. Like, and I've, I've always told people this, and no one's ever refuted this, because this is just truth. No one in any development of any Atlas game has ever went, guys, what do you think the West is going to think of the girls in 13 <laughs> Sentinels? Like, do you think they care oh, no, that they their don't. entire ass is just in the robot? Like, no one, like, we're not going to talk about them really being that naked for that long. So do you think the West is going to care, though? Because think about it like this. Mm-hmm. When the preview coverage for 13 Sentinels came up, no Japanese reviewer or Japanese fan was playing that game and going, oh, God, come on, guys. Why do the robots have to have the girls naked in them? That's so <laughs> dumb. But as soon as that game comes out of the West, everyone's like, oh, Same come thing. on, there's going to be anime. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, it's just like they, they just don't care about like they our sales to them are like. Oh, cool! We sold some extra copies. Like they—they they, they have no real like uh, interest, really, in terms of what the Western fans think. That's why, like, the most we'll ever be lucky to get is when Atlas, like, I, I guess when Atlas goes to Sojima and is like, "Hey, we're about to like release the game in the West. Can you like, like, here's a napkin. Can you just like kind of doodle on it and just like give us whatever you want? It, do- it doesn't even have to look that clean. Just give us your best napkin doodle." And then it's just like, "Congrats on the Western release." <laughs> Okay. These chumps haven't played the game. It's been out for six months. <laughs> a bunch of rubes. Like, they don't care about us. Like, our money to them is just like, cool, whatever. But it's like 13 Sentinels. Like, one of the big points in my video I went over about 13 Sentinels selling so poorly is people are like, oh no, does this mean like vanilla wear is screwed? I'm like, dude, we could have sold one copy or a hundred thousand copies and it wouldn't have mattered for them. Yeah, because it was, the, the it was like, it's Japan. all money that they're getting for doing nothing. Mm hmm. That's a very fair answer, but I, I wish they would keep the worldwide release formula in the future, even though I don't think they will, unfortunately, for the reasons that you mentioned. Um, and it's like, they, they, it's not like they don't know we want it. Like, oh, no, every that. every time a game gets announced uh, in Japan, it's always like, when's it coming into America? When's it coming to America? When's it coming yep. to America? Exactly. And it's just always for them an uphill battle of, Jesus, can we at least get it out on time without delaying it more than twice? Mm. Yep, yep. Um, what? Da, 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 da. Okay, another question in the same vein from Elon on Discord. Do you think Atlas will keep using Unreal Engine 4 after SMT5, or maybe even 5? Unreal Engine 5. Mm, um, I they struggled about this with it. Well, yeah, they're, they're still struggling with it. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're super, struggling, yeah. They've not been super public with it, which, like, obviously, why would any company... That'd be like if 343 Studios came out th- this week and be like, guys, we're really struggling with this Halo game. Like, I gotta be honest with you, this thing's being tough. Um, uh, but, yeah, I would say we all have to wait and see how... Not only how SMT5 does, but just generally how it performs. Um... Another thing that kind of leads into that, once Unreal Engine 5 got announced, I was like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if once the exclusivity for 5 is up, Atlas just straight up is like, okay, because 5 is basically a souped up version of 4 with just more features and like it rolls into it. If you're making something in Unreal Engine 4, you can roll it into 5 and just start using the new benefited features. Mm -hmm. So... Hopefully, if 5 is a rounding success, Atlas gets really uh, balled up and they're like, okay, so for our definitive edition or whatever we're going to do, uh, let's just release it on PC and consoles on Unreal Engine 5 because the Switch can barely handle Unreal Engine 4 as it is. Like, I, I joke about it all the time, but it's like, I will not be surprised if once we finally see, like, basically... SMT5 is going to have one of two realities once it comes out. It's going to be visually underwhelming to most people, or it's going to be so visually taxing on the Switch, it's going to take away from the enjoyment of the overall player base. First first option seems more likely to me. Mm-hmm. Um, guys, we are already two hours and 15 minutes in. We answered a bunch of questions do you guys have any other questions for us before we wrap things up before because we're about to to finalize everything and zach no problem um no problem man we answered your questions already though unfortunately but if you want to listen to the playback if you have two hours of your time to 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 give us you can definitely watch it once it uh once it's out but yeah guys if you have any final questions drop them 
uh hey we've had over 30 people watching for the whole time thank you so much guys really appreciate it thanks for I, watching guys i guess you're a special guest that's probably the reason why <laughs> <laughs> god forbid because you know there's there's no way to ever hear enough of me talking not like i have a weekly podcast that goes on for hours yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah definitely but i wanted to have you on soon because hey weekly atlas podcast what is it if you're not on at some point you know what? I keep telling that fake fan Yarly that every time. I'm like, listen, you keep saying you've got a Mega Dolan podcast, but right. I've not been on it for a single episode, so hey. it might as well just it might as well just be the number one Genshin Impact podcast of all I know. <laughs> and I have as many episodes as him now, and I started four weeks ago. So <laughs> that Don't... man might have the worst track record, by the way, of releasing episodes oh, when man. news comes out the exact next poor day. guy poor guy every <laughs> single time i remember listening to the episode that came out like the day after the july partner showcase and i was like oh man it's so underwhelming i i listened to like four podcasts before his and everyone was like freaking out about smt5 and nocturne and he was like oh yeah i'm just on a four golden on pc and it was like such off topic it's like oh man poor his timing was was pretty bad but it's not his the, fault unfortunately but the only thing that was more depressing was then I, i'm actually planning on being on his uh episode next month for the new consoles coming out nice. it was only more depressing because like what i finally was like so what are you ever gonna have me you on your show and he's like mm, you know what i think i might get you on for when the new systems come out and and then I was thinking about it. I was like, I'm, you're only inviting me on because I'm the only one who's getting a new system. <laughs> Everyone on your show, isn't it? Basically. <laughs> okay, we got our question. Hey, Peter coming in once again with the $5 donation. Thank you so much, Peter. You've been a big help for uh, your Parker, support. You're, really basically, you're basically affording this entire podcast for basically. everyone else to listen to. So, I, I, by the way, before we answer his question, I have to ask Peter Parker an actual question. <laughs> Peter Parker, what is your best Peter Parker? Like, out of all the movies, comics, or games, who right. is your favorite Peter Parker? <laughs> There's only one right answer. Oh, no, dude, I'm, I'm already, I think I, I think my answer is going to be more different than you, so we'll have to wait for his. So, I'll let you okay, answer the remake him. one first. Do you think, uh, believe, do you believe that Persona 1 through 3 might ever be remade in the future? Not 1, 2. Because Atlas has no clue what those games are, if or if they even exist anymore. Uh, but three, remade. Mm. I feel like a port of some kind makes more sense. But I would, I wish they would. Like one, um, one, two, two, two point five. Count me in, man. Those games would definitely benefit from a refresh or a complete overhaul. Like not not complete, but refresh certain elements. It could definitely benefit from it. What, what are you? What do you think? I know everyone wants 3 to get remade because there's so much nostalgia behind 3. It's almost like the Final Fantasy 7 of the series. Mm -hmm. um, I think, obviously, like I said, 3 is going to get that like uh, port next year for the anniversary. That's j just like a absolute given. Uh, you will see 1, 2, and or I guess 1 and the 2 duology again. I think the mm. safest answer is you're going to get the PSP trilogy of those games uh one two eternal punishment and innocent sin I, that would you're be gonna amazing. see all of those kind of combined into one game i think that would be a really easy game to hdify yep. because a lot of those assets just like putting like making them go from the pc like even if you just throw like the that into like a psp emulator and like up res it like that game already looks really really well like and the biggest hurdle is just finally giving eternal punishment that western localization it's always deserved Cool, cool. I sure hope you're right. Um, Ozzy Sot asks, do you know if Atlas West is hiring at the moment? I Atlas have no clue. Atlas West is, well, I guess Sega is Atlas, so yes, they currently have a lot of other positions open. I like, they just added another thing open today for like communications manager, so I'm going to apply to that, and even nice. though I'm 99% sure I will 100% not get hired. You're asking for too much Persona 5 scramble. They don't <laughs> want to true. hear you in the I get, office. <laughs> I get in. You know what? You know what? They think that's all I'd want to do, but then if I get hired at Atlas and Sega, you know what my first decree would be? <laughs> Ask them to release say, the Where game. the hell is my Alien Isolation 2? That game was so oh, good. Yeah, what that's happened, Sega? Sega? You're right. <laughs> well, you had that a Switch like port the, in like 2019. That was the last time Sega West had money. That, that game is so good. 
<laughs> I haven't played it. I should I should check it out. Um, Demi Crow asks Peter Parker. What a clutch answer! Spectacular Spider-Man: The TV Series. That is a great choice, but not my answer. You, not you, my answer. You know, oh, but my answer is Tobey Maguire. Spectacular Spider-Man is Tobey Maguire. See, I thought you were gonna say that. Um, well, because it's the guess. right who answer. Do think, who, do you, who do you think? Who do you think my my go-to Spider-Man is? And this should be very easy based off my love of Yosuke. Based off your love of Yosuke? Mm hmm. I don't know. 2018 Spider-Man, voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, best Spider-Man ever. I love. He is so charming. I don't care what face model he has. Yuri Lowenthal just nails that perfect Peter Parker Spider-Man mix. Like he is always energetic, but he's always got his problems, but like he's never too douchey. He's never too young. He's like that, that perfect age of like, I've been Spider-Man a couple of years, but I'm still sloppy in my early teens, like my, my early twenties. Uh, like he just nails so many aspects of like that. So yeah, PS4 Spider-Man just hit on such a strong, end. and that that's even considering stuff like Spider-Verse and I love Spider-Verse. Yeah, they're great movies. I liked him as well. Two weeks from now, David, I'll be playing Miles Morales and peeing my pants constantly. Oh, It'll just be a direct stream. If it was not eighty nine ninety nine, I would pick it up, <laughs> but I can't afford it. Um, okay, we we have a lot of questions. We won't be able to answer all of them, unfortunately, because I definitely want to wrap things up. Don't want to keep you on for for too long. Uh, I'll answer two other questions in order. Could it Demicro asks, could a 2.5D person a game work? <sighs> Maybe a spin-off. Um either SMT or Persona, but uh, I don't see Mainline going to 0.5D anytime soon. Yeah, it, it's like it could, but I think it's more of a case of Atlas just doesn't really like I think for them they would view that as uh, going back in terms of their presentation, they're they're definitely not a company who like has the most like like they're not not like a Square Enix or like look at how crazy realistic graphics are. But Atlas is definitely aware in terms of how they like to sort of show off their games and stuff. Definitely, definitely. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'll pick one last question from from Discord. Oh yeah, that's the one question that I wanted to ask you. I'm glad I found found it. Um, Marcos on Discord asked us, since the environment on the trailer looks a bit like the Vortex world from Nocturne, and the Luc Lucifer is the same design as Nocturne, do you think that Five will be a successor, uh, spiritual successor, or a full-fledged sequel? Uh, and we're talking about Nocturne here, obviously. I think there's clearly a, a reason. I think there's clearly a reason they chose to release Nocturne before 5. Like, there are a lot of similarities we've seen even through the couple of trailers. As much as I would be intrigued to see 5 follow up from elements of Nocturne, I think what's most likely is actually we're just going to see a lot of callbacks to the first four games throughout 5. Like, there's already a couple of different things we've seen that are elements from four elements from one and i'm sure there will be even elements from two there mm -hmm. so i think because nocturne's been on the brain for so many people it's really easy to be like oh is five going to be a spiritual successor to it but i think calling a game five and following up elements from nocturne after so many years it would just be kind of asking for too much without them being deliberately uh saying it about so like i'm sure there will be elements for it but I don't think at any point five is going to get to a point where like, oh, let me tell you the legend of the shirtless teenage boy in Tokyo. Hmm. Yep, makes sense. I hope to see reference to older games. It always put a put a smile on my face when I see them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're about ready to wrap things up. Is there one last thing that you want to to say before we say goodbye to this episode four? Uh, well. First off, thank you everybody for listening to us uh, gabber on for so long, and also thank you David for having me on. Not not only for such an awesome episode of the podcast, but also thank you for having me on 
a very a appropriately named episode four because Hell as you. you know my my <laughs> my other online handle is torchwood 4 sp so clearly that's why you waited to help so four to have me on i appreciate absolutely. that absolutely <laughs> no it's because of scramble sir <laughs> you needed to be on so that's all that's all i'm good for once it's gone my, my goal that's why people You're will be out. like spencer aren't, spencer aren't you excited scramble just got announced i'm like what am i gonna tweet about now <laughs> basically well thank you so much for being here man again i really do appreciate it and thanks to everyone who came by to say hello or to who stayed for two hours and a half with us we really appreciate it it means a lot thank you guys so much for your support and we will see you guys next week for a another episode of the demon